All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the February meeting of the Parks, Recreation, Waterfront, and Resiliency Committee of Community Board 3. Uh, my name is Michael Marino, and as usual, I am the Zoom facilitator for the meeting. Trevor Holland is the chair of the meeting. Uh, we will go over some quick Zoom things before we get the meeting underway. Um, as usual, for attendance purposes, we ask everybody to sign in to the chat with your name and any organizational affiliation, if you have one. Um, the chat is only set to come to myself and to the co-host of the meeting. Uh, so we don't use the chat to have any kind of side conversations or any other things. Um, if there's uh, information that needs to be disseminated from the presenters to the audience, I will take care of that for them. Um, so just a reminder for those that might've just came in, please sign in for attendance purposes into the chat. Uh, we ask all, Present, all present who are not community board members, so that includes uh, presenters as well, to sign in for attendance purposes. Um, so uh, we also, as a reminder, ask everyone to stay muted through the whole meeting um, and only unmute yourself uh, if and when you are called on to speak by the chair. Uh, to do that, uh, the controls right now will be at the top of your screen because I'm sharing the screen. But normally, if the screen's not being shared, they'll be at the bottom of your screen, and you would just uh, look at the microphone icon and click unmute to unmute yourself. Um, and same thing for oops, uh, when we um, get to the point of doing questions and answers after each presentation, we ask that you use the raise hand feature for that as well. And again, you'll find the raise hand feature under reactions um, in the uh, menu bar. Um, you can find the raise hand feature. So typically the way the meeting will work, as you can see, we have uh, six items on our agenda. Um, uh, the first two don't really call for public uh, comment or questions. The next three, three, four, and five will. Um, so what will happen is those will be presented by the city agencies that are here to give those presentations. After they are presented, the board chair will ask for questions and comments from community board members first. Um, so during that time, we ask everybody to leave their hands down with the exception of community board members. Uh, and then after that, questions and answers will be taken by any other community board members that might be here that aren't on the parks committee. Uh, and then we will open it up to the public for questions and answers. And keep in mind, that uh, we ask you to keep your questions and comments to two minutes. Uh, we typically use a timer for that. Uh, so uh, that will be shown on the screen as well. Um, and it will turn yellow when you have 30 seconds left and red when your time is up. Uh, we also ask that you keep your questions and comments germane to what has been presented tonight and not um, something that was presented five meetings ago or two meetings ago. Um, uh, so that we can keep the conversation moving and keep the agenda going. Uh, as a reminder, this is recorded uh, for us to abide by open meeting law. And one last reminder, if you have not done it so far, to sign in into the chat with your name and any organizational affiliation for attendance purposes. Trevor, you're on. Uh, thank you, Michael, for that introduction and uh, overview of how this meeting will function. Um, we also ask that if you are not speaking to keep your microphone muted, uh, and if we hear background noise, uh, please do not get upset if uh, you're muted. You can always unmute yourself when the time comes. Um, first up from our committee members, the minutes were set out. Uh, were there any uh, corrections needed from the minutes because they are deemed approved? Seeing none, we're going to go into attendance. Uh, Ryan, if you want to the roll call for attending members. Troy Velez. Yes. Josephine Velez. Yes. Daniel Tano. Yes. Robin Chattel. Yes. Michael Marino. Yes. Valentina Jones. Yes. Carlin Chan. Yes. Your own Altman. Don't believe he's on. David Adams. Yes. Ryan Gillum. Yes. Kay Webster. Yes. Trevor Holland. Yes. That's it. 
All right, thank you. Before we go into the rest of our agenda, I just want to uh, reemphasize a couple of points that Michael has made, and this will help us speed through the meeting a bit. Uh, we've had some marathon meetings, and I understand that they can be very tedious, but there is a lot going on. So we are going to do our best to limit the discussion and the questions on each topic um, so that we're not here for four, and a half, four hours plus. Um, keep in mind that we typically we let everyone speak, including members of the public, uh, but we really, really want to keep uh, our questions and our comments to the topic at, at hand. Each month, DDC has come and given an update on EFCR. Uh, so we're going to move from the last month to this month to really just stick about to stick to uh, construction questions that have to do with uh, today's agenda. Um, this will help. I hope this will help move the meeting along and and allow us to sort of discuss things. That are that are in the present as opposed to going back uh and sometimes in, in some cases uh, a couple of years ago so just keep that in mind and and when you ask your questions or provide comments uh the first agenda item is the parks manager update and michael if you see i don't know if you see this phone number uh, i thought i did jamil you that 718 number hey mike yes i am all right that's okay. me you're on. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. So I have some actually good news. We were able today to install. Could you introduce, could you introduce yourself? Jamil, could you introduce yourself? I'm sorry. I'm sorry about Trevor. Hi, good evening. My name is Jamil Phillips. I'm the district manager for three for the Parks Department. Um, part of my report is going to be brief, but we have some good news. Um, we were able to start the installation of the kiosk, the needle kiosk at, at Sarah D. We were able to install three units, one at across from Lionsgate, one, of course, from the BRC, and another one near Stanton Storehouse or the playground area where we have the new bathrooms. We're working on this, this, this weekend to install one unit at Tompkins with two bathroom units, one in the men's, one in the ladies. We should have it completed by Monday. Um, but that also, we have been focused on homeless outreach. We were able this weekend, this past week, to get a homeless person who's been living on the handball courts at Coleman to take services which he was happy to leave. And so he, homeless services came out. He was able, he received it. So we have, we had, we had him removed. We vouched all his items, um, which is a good thing. Um, um, also this past week, the week before we had the, the Lunar New Year celebration at Sarah D. It went very well. Um, it was a positive turnout and we're getting ready for the parade, which I believe should be coming at the end of the month. And the last two weeks we were able to receive some additional staffing, which will be a great help because we're still dealing with the day-to-day -day stuff, which is um, illegal dumping, graffiti, and some of the issues that day-to-day, -day, unfortunately, we have to deal with the District 3. But the new staff has been a great help, so we can focus on keeping these parks clean and addressing some of the day-to-day -day issues. That's my report. Thank you, Jamil. I'm going to go to committee members just for some quick questions. Uh, first hand I see, and we're going to limit it to these two, is Carlin, go ahead, and then Kate. Yeah, hi. I'd like to do a follow-up. Uh, several months ago, we, uh, we, we did prioritize the lighting issue in Columbus Park, uh, Thomas Payne Park, and also Foley Square Park. Uh, it's been about three and a half, four months now. Nothing's happened yet. Can we readdress this I know with DOT? There, there's, there's actually a ticket out with DOT. It's not really my property. It belongs to Jamal Patterson. I know I spoke to him tomorrow earlier last week, and it is a current DOT ticket regarding the lights at Columbus and Foley. Okay, I can follow just, with him this week. If you could follow up, and uh, Susan, if you're still on the line, uh, you're aware of this issue? Nope. I thought I was okay. supposed to get, I was going to get emails to follow up on uh, service delivery issues. This was months ago. You well, probably got one months ago i don't re i it's not on our chart because we put we chart all the problems and it's not on their chart if i could get an email with um the cb3 parks and the locations we will follow up with dot and with the other jamel okay i i, I may have I'll do okay go ahead Jamel. you're better this than i am i can put you the ticket number I'll get it from Jamal tomorrow. I can travel, I can send you guys the DOT ticket number for the service. Sure. Thank you. 
Okay. Well, I'll piggyback on the lighting issue because SDR had that. And I think Susan, you have that, uh, but if you don't, maybe Jamel, you could also center those. Um, but anyway, that wasn't, I mostly wanted to thank you, um, Jamel, and thank Susan for the kiosks and housing works. Those are hugely helpful to us. Um, and also it was a tremendous Lunar New Year celebration uh, in the park and it was great to see the mayor and everybody else there. Um, and um, uh, I was asked to ask uh, uh, about the BRC windows and doors that have been promised for five, six years now. Um, not to put you on the spot because I know that's really not you, but if you could get that information, Jamel, that would be hugely great. Um, and I do wanna thank you for the condition of Sarah Roosevelt Park from Delancey to Houston is incredibly clean and Damara and her crew, Hennessy, Jason and Louie are amazing. They work their butts off and she's incredible crew uh, chief. Um, so we wanted to thank you and thank her for, for that. It's, it's just light years different. Thanks. So we recently got a new, new supervisors. We revamped the staffing on Saturday. They've done a really, today, while we had the kiosk um, installed, we walked around the park. A great improvement with the cleanliness and addressing a lot of the day-to-day -day issues. We're really keeping the park up to par. And then seeing the families out utilizing the space is a great thing also. Yeah, thank you. Um, Demara in particular, I do though want to appreciate because she's been uh, diligent for, for the moment she got here. Um, but we noticed, so thank you. Thank you, Kay, and thank you, Jamil. Uh, next up is the monthly update from uh, DDC regarding ESCR. Uh, so if the team is ready, they can introduce themselves. I think they need to screen share, uh, so let's begin. They're all set up, and um, Desiree, while you're getting ready, I did, one of the things I failed to remind people of at the beginning is while the screen is being shared, if you'd rather swap it out, um, and see people's faces rather than what's being shared on the screen. You can do that in the controls at the top of your screen uh, as well. You can just uh, choose to see something else or make it or make it smaller. Great, well, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, great. Let me just see. Uh, share screen. Okay. All set. Good. Okay, perfect. Let me just pull up. Okay. All right, great. Um, thank you, Trevor and Michael, and um, welcome everyone to the monthly um, ESCR update. Um, again, I'm Desiree Gazzo um, from HNTB Lero, the program management construction management team um, working uh, for uh, the city and DDC. Um, I am joined tonight by several of my colleagues from DDC, from our team and some of our partner agencies. Um, and we will again provide you an update on um, many of the, again, construction focused activities of um, ESCR. So we'll start here um, with the highlights. Um, so we're going to start with a few community resources, put that up front this time. Um, we have an important work with us update. Um, and then we'll go into the overview of contracts, uh, starting briefly with project area two to give an update on that, project area one, um, construction updates, a couple of environmental items, and then uh, what we've heard as we typically do. Um, I did want to say we did try to incorporate many of the comments from the last CB3 meeting. It was a very long meeting um, and there were many comments. So there are items that we were able to address um, and some I will speak to that we are still working on um, and have tried to provide as much information as possible. Um, so again, we can certainly follow up on some of the items um, following this meeting. Um, so we did want to point out um, some of the many communication resources that we have. Um, as we've mentioned, we have our community construction liaisons um, for the project. There are three, um, Nadine for project area two, and then for project area one, we have Joyce and Sonia. Joyce is fluent in Mandarin and Sonia is fluent in Spanish. Um, again, 
they are fairly new to the project, have not been around for as long as we all have, um, but they will do their best um, to work with the team to provide responses um, to all of the questions that, that we have. Um, I know some of you had called um, Sonia and her voicemail was having some problems, so please bear with us as we um, get everyone um, up to speed, but they are really great and um, will grow to be, you know, a wonderful resource um, for the project. So please feel free to reach out to them. We have the inquiry tool. Um, we again have been receiving a lot of inquiries and try our best to um, respond in a, in a quick manner. Um, so again, thank you for your patience with that. Um, we do continually update the website. If you haven't seen the Esker website, um, we have kind of a quick links on the first page that um, provides links to the environmental documents. Um, there's the project design elements. So we did have an effort, and this has always kind of been here, um, to, again, instead of folks having to navigate around uh, the whole website, we did try to provide these kind of quick links to the things that we felt would be most um, helpful. So if you um, do go to the website, um, please view that home screen first and take that in because that might offer um, a, a link to where um, you want to, you might want to go. Um, and then again, it has the community advisory group page. Um, we reference the community advisory group meetings a lot because um, they are recorded and we have the um, live recordings, you know, directly on the website. We've also included um, the highlights of each meeting. I know some people have said, and it's completely true that they don't know where exactly to find some of the information that has been presented. Um, so we did update that page to have some of the um, highlights and key topics. So you can just do like a control F or control find on that page um, and type in kind of the subject that you're looking for. Again, it doesn't have everything, um, but, but it is, I think it's very helpful to find things. Um, the CAG also has submitted um, several uh, letters uh, to the ESCRA team um, on environmental, on several other topics. Um, so all of those letters are also um, here under the city responses to CAG inquiries. Um, so there is information there as well. Um, we are working on um, a quick links um, kind of resource page that is more detailed in some of the uh, specific inquiries that folks are looking for. Um, so again, we, we started working on that as a result of um, last month's public meetings. Um, so we are looking to get that out within uh, hopefully this month uh, as a, a quick way, again, to access some of the items more in like a list form, um, again, than having to look around the website. Uh, so again, we are, you know, taking your considerations and comments and trying to provide you with the information that you know you need so again thank you for um for doing that but i would encourage people to to check out the website if you haven't um Sorry, can we go back to that what, that first page oh, sure. just real quick i just want to just emphasize to the folks at this meeting that uh there's a lot of information this isn't this project did not start a year ago two years ago this is nearly a decade of planning and uh, meetings. So we, we, it, we really want folks to go to these websites to get the information, to get the history behind this project. Because at this point, we are having construction uh, meetings and talking about the progress of this project. So I, I'm gonna, if you need to take, take a picture, this will be available. These links are available uh, so that we can uh, have productive meetings. But uh, thank you for presenting this at the first slide so we can uh, talk about uh, issues uh, that have to do with construction. Thank you. Of course. And I just want to say um, one more thing to point out is the the project went under public design commission review um, and the two public design commission um, presentations are full of renderings and details and plants and there's so much information um, in those two documents and when you go to the kind of project design page now where we have all the project elements, we did provide links to both the preliminary um, public design commission uh, presentation and the final design uh, public design commission presentation. Um, they are and were in the all of the presentations that again Trevor points out is 
a lot of them. Um, so we have been referencing them a lot. Um, so we did put uh, like quick link buttons um, to those two presentations um, on the, uh, the project design page. So um, again, a great resource. Um, so next week we are having our um, kind of work with us hiring virtual resources event, um, February 16th from four to 7 p.m. Uh, we have typically held these in the morning um, and are trying an evening, uh, an evening one instead. Uh, we have been working uh, very closely with DDC's Office of Diversity and Industry Relations, who has been present at the um, other quarterly sessions. Um, both general contractor teams will be um, will be there uh, for the presentations. Our PMCM team again will be present. And we've been really fortunate to work with the New York City Department of Small Business Services, Workforce One, um, Lower East Side Employment Network, and the many entities that are within those groups um, in the programming for this event. Um, and we've, you know, it's been amazing working with them and they've been providing um, input and feedback. And, you know, we, are, we will continue to work with them on this project again through the life of the project. But, um, Again, they will be holding kind of these breakout rooms. Um, so it will be a presentation and then an opportunity um, to kind of speak a little bit closely with some of the organizations in these smaller breakout sessions. So we do encourage you to register. I have the, um, the link here. Again, this presentation will be posted tomorrow. You can also go to the website, um, the contact page. Um, you'll see there's a work with us link there. Um, and you could register. There's also a, I think it's only five questions. There's a five question survey um, after you register. You do not have to take the survey, uh, but it does offer a few questions that will help us plan, um, not just work with us meetings, but meetings in the future. Um, it, it, we really would love to hear from you. So please, if you could take um, the survey, that would be uh, really helpful. And even if you're not attending, uh, please take the survey as well. Um, okay, project area overview, everybody is familiar with that. Um, overview of contracts. Uh, so project area one, um, again, notice to proceed was in August. Um, we are moving forward um, with the project. We'll go into more detail um, in the coming slides. Project area two, um, we still are in construction, again, in the Asser Levy Cyrusen Cove um, Park and over 650 feet of flood wall have been installed. Um, we finally have news for parallel conveyance. This is a monumental day. <laughs> um, the parallel conveyance uh, bid was opened this morning. Um, so you can review the preliminary results um, at the link provided there. Um, you could also Google um, New York City DDC preliminary bid results and it will take you to the page. Um, and then you'll see this sand res um, PC contract at the bottom. It has today's date on it and it will give you um, the information about the bid um, process. Um, again, since that just happened today, um, I do not or we do not have any more um, information than what is available um, there. Uh, so please, um, so please take a look at that. Um, so project area two, um, again, construction is uh, pretty much, you know, continuing in the areas that we have been speaking about, Asser Levy Playground, um, the restoration is ongoing. I have another photo um, in the next slide. Um, East 23rd Street, the utility work and pile installation ongoing, same as the West Service Road. Um, they are starting the flood wall foundation um, there, as well as in uh, Asser Levy Park. Uh, playground as well. Uh, again, they're uh, kind of half of the play, uh, half of the playground or park is being restored while the portion of the, where the wall is, um, is being constructed. So it's um, pretty interesting to see. Um, and then the work is continuing uh, at Stuyvesant Cove Park with the flood wall uh, in that location. Um, and then again, minor work happening within the Con Ed facility, some subsurface investigation, and then uh, finishing up work at that exit seven ramp. 
So here's um, an update on the site work at Astrolabe Playground. I neglected to mention in the last slide that the handball court is currently um, temporarily closed while they're doing um, some, I guess, refurbishment work, you could say, uh, painting and replacing uh, some of the fences and gates in that area. Um, but this is a photo uh, to the left. And that is if you're standing um, like here in the basketball court looking towards the handball court. So right here, the person who took the picture is standing on the future um, basketball court. Um, and that little circle here will be planted with a tree. And that's that little circle here, um, again, looking at the, at the handball court. So, um, you know, this is really progressing and moving along, um, again, set to open um, in spring. So everybody is very excited about that. Um, okay, so now to jump into project area one, upcoming construction activities. Um, so we provided the updated map here, um, which shows the closed areas of the park and then the open areas of the park. Um, in, again, this is the upcoming construction activities for February, an overview. Um, so the shallow clearing and grubbing activities um, are happening in the kind of larger red or pink portion of the park. Um, you know, I think uh, folks have expressed that they haven't, they aren't seeing a lot of work happening there. There's utilities in that area, and it's very important that the contractor identify the utilities before, you know, a lot of the, the work that I think people are expecting to see is completed. So, um, you know, there is work being done um, and work will continue um, to move forward in that area um, as well. Um, so the Corlears Hook Park, we have um, a partial closure um, coming up in the next couple of weeks. We have uh, more information on that in, in the slides to follow. Um, so I will speak to that more. Um, the bridge removal activities at Delancey Street do continue and I'll give an update on that in the, in the next slide. Uh, the Con Ed work in the shared use path around East Houston Street, that's the number four area right here. Um, as many are aware, it uh, does continue um, there as well. And then we have uh, utility replacements up at East 10th Street, um, which I will speak to as well. And we have an advisory out, um, out for that. So I know um, folks had asked for a schedule um, last meeting. Um, I did not come with a schedule. However, um, I did want to bring back the overview for summer 22 to um, just again, reiterate that uh, much will be the same as it, as it has been you know, for the next uh, several months. Um, at some point, Reach J um, will need to, you know, kind of come offline. Um, and as we get closer to that, uh, we will have more, more information. And we are, again, looking to provide uh, more of a, uh, like, overview of milestones or, or schedule type of thing. Um, however, it's just not available, um, at, you know, at the moment. Um, again, we are working on it. Um, another request from last meeting was the park open area percentages. Um, so I did, we were able to provide, um, provide that. So we do have the percentages here. I provided a link to the construction approach. Um, I wasn't going to go through the whole construction approach again. I hope that's okay, but you can um, look at the percentages here against what the construction approach um, maps were showing. Uh, again, there is a commitment to keep 42% open spaces for this project. Um, it was, you know, it's a commitment that will move forward. Again, the subject to change as construction move forward, you know, these percentages will vary. However, there is the commitment to keep the 42%. So um, I think a, a GIS map was originally requested. Um, we can still work towards that. Um, however, for this, meeting, um, we did want to provide the uh, percentages as requested. So um, so that is that. Um, and again, this will be made available um, tomorrow on the website. 
Um, for the construction look ahead, so again, um, in lieu of providing or being able to provide um, a schedule or, or timeline with milestones, um, we did try to put together um, kind of the, the three main areas of work, um, not including the, the larger park area, but the kind of very community um, facing uh, portions of work, which is the Corlier Hook Bridge and Park, um, the Delancey Street area work, um, and the Con Edge shared use path. Um, and as again, the project continues, we will uh, provide you know, this for other areas of, of the work. Um, but I think this just helps to maybe set expectations of the um, kind of steps of the work in these areas. Um, so I won't go into um, all of them, um, but it gives kind of an overview of the work that needs to be done. Um, again, as soon as we can, we can, we will try you know, to put a time frame to these activities. But again, we wanted to give um, what we could at this point. Um, so uh, this just gives an overview again of the Corlier's Hook work. Um, again, clear the work area. Um, the temporary bridge needs to be constructed before we can remove the Corlier's Hook bridge um, to provide access to the ferry landing and then that lower portion of the park. Um, then the um, new bridge would, the construction of the new bridge and reconstruction activities of, um, of the park would um, kind of occur. Um, and then that lower portion of the park will then, you know, open um, as the, again, that lower portion of the park uh, becomes restored. Um, so again, as we move forward, we will offer more information, but I think this, um, would hopefully again have uh, a little bit more than what, what we had provided before. Um, at Delancey Street, um, you know, we're working on removing the Delancey Street Bridge. Uh, utility improvements need to occur in that area. Um, the East River Housing Corp par parking lot, um, the access needs to change um, again in that location to facilitate uh, the, the ramp and the landing of the new bridge there. Um, the bridge would then be constructed and then final steps would be the restoration of that area. Um, for the Con Ed uh, shared use path work, um, I believe the last time we presented, we didn't have, there were some questions about how long each portion of that work would take. So again, this is approximate. Um, the work will happen in about three phases moving you know, south to north. So this was the first phase here. Um, at Houston Street, and then we'll continue to move north, um, each section taking approximately four to six months, um, approximately four to six months. I just want to reiterate that. Um, and it starts with the investigative utility work. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this at the last meeting, but there are many utilities in the park. There are drawings that show where the utilities ha are. However, it is cannot be confirmed where a utility is until investigative work is completed first. Um, so that is one of the reasons um, why there were the additional tree removals in that area. Um, you know, the, the contractor pruned the trees and protected the trees in an effort because he thought that, or they thought that, um, that the lines were, you know, closer to, the FDR then closer to, to the trees. It turned out when that investigative utility work was done, they were closer to the trees. So unfortunately, the pruning and the, the tree protection that they put up, the trees had to be taken down. Um, they again they were in the um, they were in the kind of phase one um, removals that were expected to happen from the beginning of the project. And again, they were saved in an effort to keep them up as long as possible, which we are trying to do um, with as we work through this project. Um, however, it can could not be done. So um, that is, you know, you know, efforts are being taken to to keep things available as much as possible um, by the team. Uh, however, if it can't be if the work can't be done um, safely, then they, you know, those steps need to be taken. Um, so as, after the investigative work, then there's the excavation 
um, following the excavation will be sheet pile installation. Um, again, the sheet pile machines will be similar to those that are at PA2. Um, they are, you know, large. Um, it, it will not be quiet. Um, it, but again, it is um, necessary again for that for the work that needs to be done there. Um, then they'll have the temporary restoration and final restoration. So again, as we move forward with that, um, we will have more information on timeline for that work. Um, but again, we did think it was important to provide this overview um, that we have while we're trying to get um, a schedule together you know, to, for you know, public distribution. Um, so for Corlier's Hook Park, um, we did mention that the um, partial closure would be upcoming at the last meeting. Um, we do have more information that uh, this will uh, begin the partial closure the week of February 28th. Um, so we will be issuing an advisory with tomorrow's bulletin. Um, so that week, um, the fencing and et cetera will go up. Um, in this kind of closed park area here, the red area here, so the flagpole area, um, and then uh, kind of the, the areas in, in that light pink color. Um, and then once the site is secured, then the clearing um, will, will start. Um, DDC and Parks is meeting with Friends of Corlier's Hook Park um, to review the salvaging of materials. Um, before that that work happens um, and ferry access will be maintained um, we don't have the specific details of that right now once we do the map will be updated um, but there will be ferry access um, over the Corlier's Hook Bridge um, to the passive lawn um, and uh, the ferry terminal um, there was a lot of there were several questions both received um, at the CB meeting and um, and through our inquiry tool, et cetera, um, about the work that needs to happen here. Um, again, I personally was not involved with the kind of design part of this project, but um, in looking through the presentations that we have on the website, um, I did find this Friends of Corlier's Hook presentation. It is from 2020, but it is full of information that shows the, um, the kind of the extent of the work, um, what impact, you know, where the impacts are coming from. I, the next slide has a little bit more, um, but again, I, I do want to say the um, this is another link to the PDC um, presentation. Um, you know, there is information out there, and and again, if you ask the question, uh, we will provide it to you. Um, so that's a great uh, presentation uh, to look at. This is one of the slides from that presentation. Again, we have the link here. Um, but there were many questions about, um, you know, why do the trees need to come down? Um, you know, the bridge that's that's being um, that's being placed here will be fully accessible. It will be, you know, on grade with the flagpole area and then on grade with the entrance to the park here. Um, and it will be again load rated to to handle vehicles as well. Um, again, for extra emergency access, etc. So there were many, you know. Again, we're reporting on the design of uh, the construction here, but there were many design um, meetings that happened. Again, there's parallel conveyance work that needs to be done here. Um, so this was a very thought out process and, and this is why um, this, this needs to happen. Um, over 75 new trees will be planted as well as shrubs and ground cover in the new design. Um, I, I, some of the questions were about the magnolias and the cherries. And again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what's being salvaged, but I did um, see the, the planting list and it does include new magnolias and, and cherries. So um, it, it, it will be fully planted. Um, and, and you know, grow again to be a, a, a beautiful park um, as it is. Um, there were so many folks using it this morning because the weather was so, so nice. Um, so we will have advisories posted um, in the park to let folks know um, that don't always come to these meetings. Um, and we'll be coordinating with Friends of Corlears of Park uh, to do that with our community construction liaisons. Um, there were some questions about, will it be used as staging for the temporary bridge? 
it will not, the temporary bridge will, um, will you know, start in Corlear Sook Park and then um, kind of, you know, go over the FDR to the, um, to the, uh, to the East River Park. However, it will be placed in areas that are within this construction envelope, um, you know, from 2020. So um, I just wanted to, we just wanted to bring that up. Um, the Corlears uh, Hook Temporary Pedestrian Bridge. Um, again, we, I do not have more details than um, what we had uh, from the last time we were here. Those are still um, being finalized, but once we do, uh, we will present that as well. Um, a few renderings. I think I included this one the last time. I'm not sure if I included the one on the left. Um, but again, this is a, you know, an amazing new bridge uh, that will be in place here. And again, the restoration of the flagpole area and that portion of um, Corlears Hook Park um, to lead into the East River Park. Um, the Delancey Street pedestrian detour. Uh, there is, for the work that is happening at Delancey Street, um, for the bridge removal and some of the utility work there, um, there is a pedestrian detour. There are, um, there is some signage um, about the closure of the sidewalk. We are working with um, DOT to put additional um, signage in this area, um, but we do, you know, I, I, we have received quite a few inquiries about the safety here. Um, there is, there is a sign that says sidewalk closed and folks are still running um, and walking, you know, in the in the FDR drive area um, and it is, you know, unsafe, but there is um, a detour, you know, you can walk around, it is longer, but if you're exercising, you know, what's, you know, that, that should help you. <laughs> so um, again, we will provide um, more more signage here. We are coordinating to provide a, a few more signs. We did post the this map on site, um, kind of at both ends. But please, we do ask that um, people use the detour um, because it is that FDR Drive Road is, you know, not the safest. Um, there is also work up here that is not related to the S or up here rather under the Williamsburg Bridge um, that is not work related to Esker. That question came up as well. Um, so there are two contracts that are happening in this area. Um, so please, you know, do be be careful at, if you're um, in that that intersection. Um, we have been working very cl closely with um, East River Housing Corp um, on all the work that's been happening here and providing flyers, um, you know, to the folks there. So you know, we have been again coordinating um, with with those entities there. Um, Sorry, it's not advancing. Um, the Delancey Street Pedestrian Bridge, uh, the Parkside night work is completed. So if you, um, can, you know, if you do go into that area, you will see that the um, the ramp on the Parkside is um, is completely removed. Uh, the ramp on the community side is also. I didn't update this from this morning, but it is also removed. Um, I was there this morning, and it's. The only thing that is there is the kind of center structure over um, the FDR. Um, the lead abatement process was completed for the ramps. Um, and then there will be, um, again, that same abatement process when the center portion over the FDR um, is removed. And again, that will be done um, overnight um, on a weekend. Um, and when we have that date finalized, we will, um, you know, present that as well. And here's a rendering of the Delancey Street pedestrian bridge. Um, again, similar to the Corlears Hook, it does enter the park on grade here. Um, on the community side, there will be um, a ramp, a ramp structure, but on the park side, it does enter um, at grade. Um, the shared use path con ed work, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it will continue in roughly three sections. This is the portion that is closed now. Um, I just wanted to, we wanted to make everyone or let everyone know that we have um, received a couple of inquiries and have noticed ourselves um, that the lighting um, is out by kind of the Houston Street where the detour is. So we are looking into that, um, again, working with parks and DOT 
um, mainly DOT with the lighting um, in that area. Um, I, there was also, um, you know, some uh, conditions of the path there um, that could be improved. So we are working with uh, the contractor and our construction team um, on that as well. Um, and then open areas of the park um, are, you know, managed through the parks department. Um, so again, we are working with them on the construction areas in the open areas of the park. Um, and then there are still there, I guess there is still work that the parks department um, is working on again in the open areas of the park that aren't escrow related. Um, I think um, one of the, the bathrooms were closed and again, it was, you know, a, it was a parks related thing. So um, we are, you know, there are still other things that are happening in the park and we, we do take all the inquiries in um, and then work to, you know, identify, um, you know, what, what exactly is, is happening. So um, we do, again, thank you for submitting those inquiries and, and pointing those items out and we will work to get um, the responses to you. Um, there was also a question um, or some comments about trucks using the Esplanade instead of using the shared use path. Um, we did bring this to the attention um, of the contractor um, and um, the Con Ed. So up in the northern, northern portion of the park, um, there is Con Ed work that is separate than the escrow work that is um, happening as well. So um, we have um, reached out again to um, both, both parties um, to let them know that the shared use path is um, the main line for the trucks. Um, and, you know, the Esplanade is, is mainly for the, um, for the pedestrians. Um, I will say that there may be circumstances where um, the Esplanade may have to be used when that, um, the work that's happening in the shared use path is ongoing. Um, so, uh, you know, we can't make any promises there, um, but both, you know, both parties have, have been um, you know, requested to use the shared use pass as the main, uh, the main road for vehicles. Um, Con Ed work at East 10th Street. Um, so again, uh, Con Edison will be performing utility work, um, utility upgrades um, at the East 10th Street location here off the FDR Drive. Um, it, you know, from what we've heard, it, they should be taking um, one side uh, of parking at a time. Um, those parking restrictions uh, will be communicated through on-site signage. Um, we're working closely with them to, um, to make sure that that is posted. Uh, the work is scheduled to start um, the week of February 14th, which is next week. Um, the closures, the full um, parking closure may not be in effect uh, right away. Uh, again, however, the, the notices will be posted there. And if there are any questions or comments, again, please submit an inquiry through uh, the inquiry tool or, you know, reach out to um, the CC, the community construction liaisons. Um, air quality monitor location. So we'll get into a little bit of the environmental um, questions that we've received now. So um, we do currently have all six um, air quality monitors. Um, installed. This is uh, a map of the monitoring machines, the locations of the monitoring machines, um, which is again very focused on where um, the construction activities are occurring. Um, some machines monitor existing conditions and others measure um, the potential increase of impact from construction. We are very, very close to releasing um, the uh, kind of air monitoring fact sheet. Um, this is kind of a preview um, of some of the items that are in that fact sheet. Um, but we have tried to provide, uh, again, some of some graphics to explain how the monitors work um, and what the, you know, what, what is the net particulate matter that is, um, you know, that is what measures the, the um, again, the potential impacts from excuse me, from the construction work. Um, again, there are 
CAD presentations um, that go into this in much greater detail. Um, but again, we did want to provide the air quality monitor locations for Project Area 1. This is new information. Um, you, you all are the first people um, to see that. Oh, yes. Guys, can you go inside, Bob? I one of the muffins. Okay, great. So sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's my. Yay. One. I'm sorry. <laughs> His father is supposed to be watching him, but that's okay. Um, so again, this is the first time that um, we are um, showing the, the BA1 air quality monitors. Um, so, you know, we assume there will be questions again, um, but, you know, we were able to, um, to pop them out and all six are, um, are installed. Um, and again, that will be assessed as construction move forward. Um, six is the minimum. And uh, again, it will be assessed as construction moves forward. Um, Esker mitigation techniques. Um, the contractor is continually um, implementing mitigation techniques. Um, this is the list that we had provided in um, previous presentations. Um, and, you know, we wanted to bring it up again here since it has been uh, asked quite a bit um, at the meetings. Um, so, you know, this is different uh, per the different stages of construction. Um, you know, right now the ground is primarily frozen. Um, it is damp. There is not um, a lot of, again, dust, uh, dust in the air uh, due to the weather conditions. Um, again, the, the, the small, um, you know, mounds, there are a few on, on site right now, uh, are, um, again, are being monitored uh, by the contractor, by the team, the air monitor, the air quality monitors are in place um, at the, um, at the next CAG meeting, we should have um, an update on the readings um, for last month, um, that's uh, February 24th is the next CAD meeting and we'll present um, the, we should be able to present the readings then. Um, but again, uh, the contractor is monitoring the site um, and these are the mitigation techniques that are used um, on a daily basis um, when, you know, as needed. And then should there be um, a rise in, um, in the, from the air quality monitors, uh, the site is assessed, um, and then the mitigation techniques are, you know, implemented further. Um, so, um, so again, you know, uh, these are some of the things. Again, there's a difference between um, kind of emissions, um, and those are the the smaller particle sizes, the PM two point five, and then the um, kind of dust, which is the PM10, which uh, the particulate matter, um, and both of those sizes are being measured um, for the project. Um, there was also at the last meeting um, a question about the fill material. Um, there are very uh, specific, um, you know, uh, details of, of what the fill material can be. Um, this summarizes it here. Um, there was more information provided at the CAG, um, the Community Advisory Group meeting number 11. Um, I have provided the link to it here, the PDF. Um, and if you go to the CAG page there, um, I believe that one was recorded. When was that? So this is seven, I believe in July, there, there should be a recording for that, uh, for that meeting. Um, but there was quite a few more slides um, presented there. Um, Again, the, the, the fill needs to meet one of these environmental criteria here, um, virgin quarried material, um, New York State DOT spec recycled concrete aggregate, RCA, um, and, you know, and many other kind of items here and, and needs to meet uh, the, the specifications, you know, as, as specified here by DEC um, and, and, other, and other agencies. Um, so there are special um, requirements here. Um, again, this, I think this is very helpful to understand too, that um, the upper three feet of film material, um, 
you know, needs to meet a certain uh, requirement, um, you know, then, then that lower. Um, so there is, there are many um, specifications, you know, in the project that regulate the fill that the contractor can bring in. Um, I, you know, there, I, we always receive questions about the source of the fill material and this, the contractor is not ready to um, fill yet. Um, so we do not have those, um, those, those items. So, you know, if they will come up, um, but, but the fill uh, does need to meet, again, these um, specifications here and the specifications set out in the contract. Um, for what we've heard, um, so we only have a few um, what we've heard items for today. Um, the truck routes, that has been a question that has been popping up. And we did provide um, this map uh, last time. And, you know, we did check in with the team. Um, and again, there, there is not a specific um, truck route specifically for Esker. Um, New York City DOT has, you know, put a lot of effort into their New York City truck route map. Um, which again encourages uh, construction vehicles and trucks uh, to use, you know, the, the routes that are here um, outlined on the map uh, as they navigate through the city. Um, there is signage on the streets, you know, to indicate where the truck routes exist. Um, and the, again, the Pike Street location here is four blocks away um, from the entrance at Montgomery Street, which is right here where that star is. Um, so trucks will likely, or again, be encouraged to use the New York City DOT truck routes um, to access the site. Um, and then, you know, kind of head on South Street from Pike Street um, to enter the site at Montgomery Street. That is the only entrance um, to the site. So that is where um, the construction folks um, need to go. Um, there were also questions about connections to Pier 42. Uh, we did reach out to EDC. Um, EDC has a community construction liaison, and I think we've provided his information before, um, but it's also on their website for Pier 42. Um, so the question was about the access, um, not only from uh, Pier 42 into, the, into Esker, but from the Pier 42 upland to the Pier 42 deck, again, while the upland is in construction. Um, so we did reach out. Um, they do not have the details as of uh, right now. However, they will provide um, when that information is available. Um, and I believe that was the last slide um, for the presentation. And as always, we are happy to take um, questions. All right, thank you, Desiree, for that presentation. Uh, I'm going to go to committee members first, and if there are, if there are any CB3 members, uh, please raise your hand. We'll we'll start from there, and because it is already 7:30, and we have other items, other items on the agenda, including uh, an update on the amphitheater, which is part of the SCR, Although we're going to pause here, I want to make sure we keep this uh, pretty efficient. So we'll go through the first round, and hopefully uh, we can end there, and then have folks uh, from the community board and then the public ask theirs. So uh, I believe Robin was the first one to have her hand. No, Lisa was before me. Uh, she's, she's not a parks committee member. She's a community board member. Oh, I see. OK, great. Thanks. Um, hi, Desiree. Thanks for the presentation uh, and for showing us that you're actually human. You have a, you have a family. Sorry. <laughs> That's great. No, thank you. I, I, I love that. OK. Um, I just have a question going back to Corlier's Hook Park. So I just want to make sure I understand. So the 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 flagpole and the trees coming down, right? That's that's all because of this for the new bridge that's going in. That's not for the temporary bridge that's going in. Correct. It's for the new bridge and the park restoration associated with, you know, the new bridge and the regrading of this area, et cetera. And then for there's parallel conveyance work that also needs to happen around Corlier Hook Park as well. And is the temporary bridge going to also, it's going to be in that same area, I think you, you said something about that, right? And that's, so it's not going to, no more trees are coming down because of the temporary bridge. It's just, all, it's going to still be the same 
footprint of what's happening anyway. From what we understand, yes, it will be in the same footprint. Um, again, that that location is not 100% finalized yet. So I will say as a person, I do not want to make any promises. However, it has been, um, you know, the draft location is within the, the boundaries of the work that is happening due to, again, the bridge and parallel conveyance work. Yeah, I just, you know, having been over there a few times and keep thinking of what, you know, couldn't there just be a temporary bridge at Jackson Street, you know? And why, why disturb any more of the park than we have to um, as an option? I don't know why that was, I don't know if that was ever discussed. It may have been discussed, but it just seems to me like that would be an easy thing to do. You know, having, having some engineers come in and put in a temporary bridge that goes over from Jackson Street up and over the highway. Anyway, that's that's something that I would encourage, but I don't know how how in the process we are. And I'm sure yeah, it was I, at some point in the know, last five years. Sure, and I'm certainly not an engineer, a, you know, a bridge engineer. Um, however, it you know it appears that we need to stay within the Esker boundaries, and um, Jackson is it you know it looks like it's at Pier 42 where all of that construction work is happening, um, and this needs to provide access to the ferry here. Um, so where's the map with the, I go the wrong way? Oh, oops, sorry about that. Um, so it is, again, providing the most efficient route, um, you know, to the ferry there. Um, I could take that back. However, I, I don't know if this would work with the work that's happening yeah. um, in that area, but we could certainly. Just a thought. And then, yeah. um, you know, those, again, you mentioned the slopes being redone. I mean, if you were over there like I was when the snow was, I mean, it's just, you know, winter wonderland for the neighborhood and community of kids. So I'm hoping that keep in mind when they re reconstruct it, that they keep those slopes in because it's the only winter sledding we have in, in, the, in, in the neighborhood. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's from the grading that's here. It doesn't look like that's going away with these uh, contours here. But um, but yeah, that's a great point. Anyway, thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Trevor. Um, so Desiree, I just have two questions actually related to Corlears as well. I had a third, but there was the same thing about the bridge leading into Jackson um, instead of where you pr are proposing it. Um, my first question is, I was always um, under the impression that the escrow work and the parallel conveyance work were two separate things. So um, is that correct or no? Parallel conveyance is part of the Eastside Coastal Resiliency um, kind of program. Okay, so all right, because in the past I, I thought I was I, I thought I was maybe I was misinformed. I was told that the the building of the gatehouse was sort of separate from the reconstruction of the park, or that it was a separate bid or separate contract. It's a it's a separate contract. However, okay. it so there's the three contracts. There's Project Area One, Sandres M One, Project Area Two, Sandres um, Sandy Resiliency. Um, M2, which is Project Area 2, and then Sandra's PC, which is the parallel conveyance. So it is three separate contracts under the Eastside Coastal Resiliency umbrella, if you will. So what I'm getting, what I'm ultimately leading at is that initially we were, we were um, told, and again, I understand things change all the time, but we were told that, that the two things might happen at completely different times. So now, based on what you just presented, it seems like it's happening at the same time because that's the otherwise you wouldn't need to close the FDR path. So is the FDR path being closed now because the parallel conveyance and the gatehouse is being constructed as well? I will check on the timeline of that for you. I, I don't have that. Parallel conveyance was, again, the bid was just open this morning. So I think the coordination of those two, again, contracts um, is still, and there are also some elements in what is called like the parallel conveyance. So there are some stormwater items that are happening in under the project area one and project area two contracts that ultimately connect to the parallel conveyance contract. So I will have to come back to you on the specifics of what is happening under 
project area one and what is happening under parallel conveyance. All right. Yeah, maybe by our by our walkthrough, you'll have that. Um, but and, I'm sorry, uh, Michael and Desiree, this is Jeff. The, the gatehouse will be built. Can you, under, can you introduce yourself? Sorry. I'm sorry, Jeff Margolis, DDC, Intergovernmental and Community Affairs. The gatehouse will be built under parallel conveyance. And as Desiree mentioned, that was just bid out. So there's a couple steps that have to happen before the contractor can start. So that, that will be a separate on a separate timeline. Uh, I think Desiree was just trying to show the whole breadth of what will happen in Corlier so Park, if I'm not mistaken, Desiree. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the, the gatehouse that you referred to, Michael, that is a separate timeline with a separate contractor, again, that was just bid out today. So okay. that so, is still uh, to be determined. So then the timeline. Is it possible then that the closure area that we're pre being presented tonight is not accurate then? Because from, from my understanding, the FDR path was only needing to be closed for the parallel conveyance. It's not part of, of the grading of the park. So I, I think maybe on that particular point, we'll have to get back to you, but I just wanted to clarify on the, the separation of the work. Okay, yeah. I mean, if they're gonna happen at, at completely separate timelines, then I, I don't think there's any reason to close part of the park at, for no reason. And yeah, I think we understand. Yeah, we, we, we understand the, the larger point. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Um, and then Desiree, can you go forward? I think maybe two slides to the to the bridge. Uh, yeah, that one. Um, so I just want to confirm that. I mean, I understand that these are just design slides and we've been shown these multiple times. Um, but what I'm not seeing anywhere are fences. And I just want to confirm that we are not taking down all the fences in Corlears, correct? That is a great question. Um, yeah, that this only shows the fence around the dog run here. Yeah. Uh, um, so Jeff, unless you know, again, I, I am not up on all the details of the park redesign. Um, unless you know, I would need to um, get back to you on that unless Ophelia or someone else on the team has the answer to that question. I, I unfortunately don't know. So yes, we will have to get back to you. Okay, everybody. so we could, Michael, we can certainly get back to you um, and, and you know, everyone, anyone else who has that question as well. Thanks, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Michael. Kyle? Okay, um, uh, my first question is about the bridge, the temporary bridge because I just want to make sure that it's not going to interfere with the parks that are there. I think as somebody else said, where the bridge is now, when the snow came out, there was kids there with their orange sleds up and down. And then there's a little walkway and then there's a park, which I have to say in the summertime, uh, this particular park has like uh, slides and like a jungle gym type of thing. And uh, there's very often people have their parties there. Then there's a, um, I I'm assuming it's a soccer, soccer field um, from like, from right, right from one, one piece of the park. And then there's a soccer field that goes to Jackson. And then Jackson, there's a sidewalk. And then also Jackson in terms of the street, that's how you get onto the FDR drive going south. Um, so my question is, in terms of these bridges, is it going to interfere with any of the park um, play area, you know, whether that's soccer or whether that's uh, the, uh, the slides and uh, whatever, because they, they have parties there. And is it going to interfere with uh, the area that's right there by the bridge that goes down, which is where they were? Uh, I'm assuming what I saw was orange uh, uh, sleds. Is it is whatever you're doing with this bridge, a temporary or the or the new one? Is it going to interfere with these parks because they are very very active and very much used by uh, young people of this neighborhood? Yeah, thanks, Val. Good question. So the dashed line here um, shows the extent of. Uh, where the partial um, closure will occur. That's the, the same um, as the pinkish uh, shaded area on the previous slide. Um, so the hill here, um, the flagpole area, 
Um, okay. And then this- Right, because where you have it pointed now, I think is where they were doing the sledding coming yeah. down, okay. Yeah, so the sledding hill would be impacted. Um, the okay. dog run, the fields, the playground, the kind of um, mall, if you will, uh, area will mm -hmm. not be impacted. And then again- and so Yep. I think where, where you showed the dog run and I guess the, the hospitality, whatever. So that won't be impacted because I think like the, the soccer park is comes down to Jackson. So right. that so won't that, be impacted. That won't okay. be impacted. This this whole area back here will not be impacted. Um, and okay. it looks like there will, again, th these are the project limits. So it looks like there might be, you know, work that's happening in here. But again, as we get more details, um, we will update um, the maps and, and provide the community with updates on the work that's happening there. Okay, so the soccer park will stay in the, the slides. My other question is, um, uh, I saw the day when the amphitheater, when the, uh, what do you call it, when the, when the benches or the chairs were removed. A Couple of days later, the stage was removed. I didn't smell anything, I didn't see anything, I didn't think about anything. Um, and then I saw something like maybe at the last of this meeting or some other meeting I was in, somebody said something about tell the people to close their windows. So I'm really curious, what is the significance of that? Do I need to close my window because I'm right next to the amphitheater. And so I look out my window and I see that almost every day there's like trucks and tractors or whatever, you know, for me to say there's like work, work looking trucks over there doing stuff. So I, my curiosity is what is the significance or of people asking about closing their windows. Cause I have to say, I live over here and nobody was talking about it when this happened. And I went outside, I'm sure I was out there walking around. I don't walk into the park, but I walk Jackson street on a regular. Um, and I didn't think about anything till I saw that. So what is the significance uh, of closing your windows if you live right across the street from where they're doing all of this work? Sure. So the uh, the construction activities are being um, again monitored by a number of different agencies, um, by the PMCM team, and by the contractor and you know their environmental. They have an environmental consultant on board. Um, the air monitors are in place. Uh, they're again monitoring uh, the the particulate matter that's in the air. Um, and again, everything is being consistently monitored and mitigated again through spray down um, and et cetera. So the ESCR project is not supposed to provide any impacts to air quality through the methods of mitigation and et cetera that have been, um, again, through the EIS process, the environmental process, um, you know, the, the mitigation techniques and the air monitors, um, again, are to verify that there are not impacts when, as, as happened in project area two, when the air monitors um, did exceed um, kind of the action levels. Again, there's an action level and then there's a um, kind of a threshold level. Um, the contractors took action to identify what was causing that. Again, a lot of times it was um, the admissions um, of vehicles that were, you know, idling um, around the around the monitoring stations. Um, often, if there is a uh, delivery of, um, you know, materials when they're offloading it, sometimes there's, you know, again, a small spike, and that's what it's from. Um, again, as we've mentioned before, it is the 24-hour cumulative average of the net particulate matter that um, that is, again, what is like EPA regulated. Um, so there are multiple um, checks and balances in place to make sure that um, the community, the workers that are out there, you know, on site every day um, are protected from uh, the construction that 
is happening. So um, no, we do not, you know, we will not say today you have to close your windows, tomorrow you can keep them open. It's, it's again, the project is not um, generating, um, again, you know, negative uh, air quality. And again, you know, should something happen and uh, there be again an elevated limit, um, then the community will be will be um, will be alerted, etc. So that is why, um, and we have received that question from several folks. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so thank you, Desiree. Uh, wait a minute. Can answer. I just wait a minute? Can I can I just I just want to get clear on this window closing. So. The issue with closing the windows is related to particulate matter. And I'm assuming at some point, like District 2, we'll have those uh, things that show about the particulate matter. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, so this is, though Project Area 1 started after Project Area 2, okay. um, the Project Area 1 will have the first quarterly report um, in, you know, March or April, the report will be released. Um, and then, uh, as I had mentioned okay. earlier, we are expecting to have the first, uh, readout at, okay. The so so, so the, the window closing is about this particular matter. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Okay. That, that's what I really didn't understand. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to go to Danny, who's going to wrap it up for committee questions, and then I'll go to Lisa. Daniel? Thanks. Uh, so you actually answered most of my questions from oh. inquiries, I guess, that came in uh, during the presentation, which is good that other people are getting ahead and asking the questions. The one comment I had is at the Delancey Street and the FDR service road. Um, as someone that's taken to walking that route while the park's closed, um, okay. if the happens. sidewalk, if the sidewalk is closed, you in new construction all over the city, there's usually barricades put to allow people to walk in the street and have safe passage. And if that's not possible, then this, I believe the street should be closed and not the pedestrians walking. Um, so that's my comment that I have for this one month. Thanks, Dan. I can certainly um, take that back. Uh, I know, again, the uh, DOT reviews the uh, maintenance and protection of traffic plans. Uh, we could certainly bring that back as, um, as, a, as a suggestion. Um, I know that the work under the Williamsburg Bridge, they, they, the work that they're doing there, they were able to kind of keep a pedestrian walkway open but it's on the sidewalk, it seems, and move it kind of left to right. Um, so I'm not sure what the condition is in this area, but I am very aware of all of the times in the city when they shift that, like they make you go in that kind of gauntlet thing to get around the traffic. So we will certainly bring that back to them. And Desiree, just for clarification on that, and I haven't walked this area, that corporal indicates construction by others. That's a, yes. is that DOT work or? You're, you're not sure who's doing that project. Mm, I'm not sure. Okay, we, we can find out because there's obviously some overlap in the areas and, and we'll make sure the communication stays open, uh, especially for pedestrian safety. Uh, so just wanna go back to the truck routes. Uh, Lisa, I'm just gonna ask a quick question before I go to you, the truck routes. Uh, and I know they, they're, they are recommended by the city. Uh, they're going to be two major projects. And as you know, Pier 42, there's also a major construction project uh, two blocks down the street of proposed two 80-story towers who are also using the same construction routes. So I just want to make sure that we're aware of this because there's going to be a lot of construction trucks using South and Pike, um, an extraordinary amount. Um, and I know that CCL from P42 is on here and he's on the agenda to talk about that entrance, but I know there's an entrance to Basketball City for Pier 36, which has a lot of pedestrian traffic. So, so just be aware of 
all the people who walk that intersection at Montgomery to get over to Vasco City. Um, Lisa. Thank you. It's a quick question, I think. Um, my question is about the shared path and uh, at East Calston Street. If I'm not mistaken, and I could be, um, I thought that last month you reported, Desiree, that there were, was going to be an accommodation for walking on the, to the side of the path on the little planted area um, that exists um, throughout the, I guess you'd say on the west of the shared path. Mm -hmm. And um, now you can only go south. You can't go north. You can't use that shared path. It, it, can you, it, am I remembering your statement correctly? And is there an explanation for why it's not being used? Yes. So I believe that was the case last month. Um, and last month we had just, just prior to the meeting, we had included the map for this, you know, for this area and included those um, talking points. Um, and that information was, again, the part where there would be a pass through was incorrect, which we discovered the next day. Um, and so when we posted the, um, this presentation online, um, we did put a correction for the slide um, in the presentation, we included it in the bulletin. Um, and so again, we wanted to let people know that this work would be happening. However, the details were not, you know, I guess 100% flushed out um, when we received it. So the work needed to, again, take up that full area um, of the shared use path at Houston Street. Um, and they were able to put the ramp, uh, to use the ramp uh, in the kind of Southern area and then open up this, uh, this kind of, they asphalted the area here. Um, again, to provide access to the area, um, the southern area, and then kind of have um, still a loop up at the top. Um, so that unfortunately was not able to be as we had presented it. Um, and again, uh, we tried to rectify that as quickly as possible the next day. And what about the, uh, as the shared path gets closed off going north? Uh, uh, will there will that access area be available in those further um, sections? So I don't have that um, information right now. Um, originally, the entirety of the shared use path was supposed to be closed from the beginning of the project. So the contractor is trying again just to close off the sections that they need to do the work. Um, and again, as that investigative work happens to identify where um, the, the limits of the lines are um, and how they have to fit the machinery in those limits, um, I think that will dictate how much of the shared use path is closed. Um, as I mentioned, the, when they get into the sheet piling, um, it is not a small machine. Um, so again, we want to make sure that pedestrian safety is um, taken into account as they're working uh, in this area. Um, so we will come back with more information as you know they progress north um, north of this area. But again, we will try and keep uh, in mind the circulation of the community, you know, in these areas and the fields that are open, et cetera. Okay, thank you. That's all right. And I'm just going to mention this to the committee members before we go into the, the public portion that uh, if anyone uh, would like to take a tour of PA2 to look at some of these completed areas, uh, including detours, I, I think if we if there's interest, we can organize a group uh, to take a quick tour of PA2. That is if people want to uh, tour, but we can talk about that through uh, at a later point, but I think it might be well worth it so we can understand the, the, how this construction is, is progressing. All right, so I see three hands uh, and I'm gonna go in this order, Tommy, Frank, and then Tonto. Um, I, 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 I'm, Michael, I don't wanna put up the clock and I see you, Wendy. I don't wanna put up the clock, 
uh, but I, I fear I may have to. I really want to keep these questions to the presentation at hand. Um, I know there's a lot of information and this has been a long project, but if we could please respect that because you're not only respecting uh, your neighbors, you're respecting the committee. Uh, so Tommy, uh, if you want to start. Hold sure. on, Trevor. Hold on. I'm sorry, Tommy. Um, I, sure, I hold time on my phone, Trevor, if that works sure. for you, and I can just interrupt. We'll, and, we'll see how it goes. It never works, but we'll see how it goes. And um, Valentina also wanted to ask another question on behalf of Lower East Side Power Park, Chip. Okay, Val, I'll cue you after Wendy, but these four we're going to take. It's already almost eight o'clock, so we'll take these four, go to Val, and then we will go to the next agenda item. Uh, thanks. Go ahead, Tommy. Sure. Two, two quick questions. Um, First of all, I've been asked several asking several times. The contractor is supposed to hire an in, independent environmental consultant, and we have not gotten the name of that independent environmental consultant. And the other point is, I live directly across from the site, right next to the Lancy Street Bridge, which was demolished, and we were told that had toxic materials. To get a, a report a month after is really not very helpful. And as you said, you calculated on a 24 hour period. Well, the construction only takes far 12 hours. And if it's spiking for four hours a day, I would like to know that apropos of what Valentina said, so I would keep my windows closed for the four hours it is spiking. So it's imperative that we get real time air quality reports. The technology is there. And I don't understand why we cannot get access to the air monitors. We don't even know if they're working. I see them, but we haven't gotten a report since construction started. The other point is if you go back to the map of where the pedestrian, uh, where it's closed under the Lancy Street. Um, basically people get off the M14 bus and they walk north on the FDR Drive service road to Baruch and to get to other places. And there are almost no signs. And as Daniel said, pedestrians should be accommodated. There's no reason why barriers can't go apart. The street is very wide there. All you need is the typical plastic barriers that are used at every construction site to be put there because joggers, elderly with shopping carts, bikers, it's the only north-south pass now now that the uh, uh, that that the park is closed, I mean, so I mean, if you want to wrap up, we're going to set you, you have the two signs. questions. People are going to use it, so it has to be made safe. Yeah, can I get an answer? So thanks, Tommy, for the questions. Um, I will bring the comments about the sidewalk closure here back to um, the larger team. Um, again, we are trying to get more signage um, out there, but I will bring back the suggestion um, about the kind of walkway or protected walkway in the street um, back to the team and, and we'll provide an update. Um, the air monitoring, um, so the Delancey Street ramp removal completed um, there. The contractor has an environmental consultant. I, I do not have the name of that group off the top of my head. However, um, we can provide it to you. Um, I know you've submitted some inquiries, uh, so we will follow up with that in, in the inquiry tool. Um, the lead abatement that was done, that was completed on the ramps, um, again, was completed by a abatement subconsultant, a lead abatement subconsultant whose job is to um, is to complete, you know, lead abatement and types of abatement throughout the city. So um, they, you know, followed the uh, protocols that are set for lead abatement mm -hmm. um, and completed that in a very careful and delicate manner um, for for both sets of the ramps, um, the community and the park side. Um, and then the air quality monitors are 24 seven, the air quality monitors. I, we have, you know, brought back the real time monitoring. Um, I will bring it back again. Um, but the monitors reading are reading um, air quality or particulate matter um, 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, the 
as we've mentioned before, the contractors, environmental consultant, and certain folks on the team will get an alert if the particulate matter um, is increased in the air. Um, they get an immediate alert. Um, so it is not, again, the EPA um, reviews air quality impacts based on a 24 hour average, uh, but the air quality monitors are 24 seven um, taking, um, you know, again, taking readings. Um, and again, we're hoping to have the first set of um, readings at the CAG meeting um, and the uh, PA2 um, reports, which include the graphs that of the air quality monitoring um, will be published again, the ones from last year will be published hopefully within this month and the same will be provided for PA1. So you will get, um, you know, graphed data and not just an update with the, 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 qual the quarterly reports. All right. Thank you, Desiree. I'm going to go in this order, Frank, Tonto, and then we'll end with Wendy. Go ahead. Hey, thanks very much, uh, Trevor. And thank you, Desiree and team. I just had one, I guess it's more of a recommendation, but uh, with regards to Corlier's Hook Park, I have been a huge fan of the uh, Gorilla Gardens that a lot of, uh, I think it's predominantly Asian folks have created along the FDR on the other side. You'd only know it if you kind of knew it and walked along there. Um, so I mentioned this at that walkthrough a couple of years ago, but so I just want to re kind of stress again that it would be great if there was kind of some sensitivity to reaching these folks and just explaining to them just generally, you know, when they're going to have to abandon their gardens that they really work very hard at. And I do apologize to friends of Corlier Hooks if I'm saying something that they don't want to, you know, I'm, you know, this is again, this is a, a gorilla style gardening, but uh, I, I do keep them in mind uh, because I do like the style of gardening that we have down here below Grand Street and different um, NYCHA developments, et cetera. So it's just a sensitivity to someone can, I, I don't think that they speak much English either. Uh, so, f you know, just so that they're aware and if there is anything within any program within New York City Parks or whatever other agency that can, you know, offer them uh, spaces elsewhere, I would encourage that. And then the last thing unrelated is I just want to say thank you to Rick Fogarty from uh, Pier 42 Liaison because uh, he has been good about giving us updates when they're doing nighttime and weekly construction for Gouverneur Gardens residents. So thank you. And I thank you, Frank. Just a quick interrupt. I believe Rick is on uh, for our Pier 42 update after we finish this. Uh, but Desiree? Thanks. Thanks, Frank. We also noticed um, the gardens as we were have been walking the site. Um, and we did reach out to Michael to find out if he knew of the folks who did do the gardens, because we do want to make them aware. Um, so our CCL Joyce does speak Mandarin, which we um, which we were told that the folks that are gardening down there do speak. Um, so we have um, created a, a, a laminated sign that I think Joyce is bringing it down there tomorrow um, to put down at the gardens because anytime um, she or I have walked the site, um, the folks haven't been there. Um, so we will leave a note and hopefully they will reach out. Um, if anyone else does um, see the folks down there, uh, please, if you can manage to give them, you know, our information, um, Joyce does speak um, fluent Mandarin and, you know, would we do want to communicate with them that um, the area will, you know, potentially be impacted with the upcoming work. Um, and I can't speak to, you know, if there are areas to relocate the gardens, um, but that is a, a you know, a great, uh, great idea and thought, but we are trying to reach out to them to let them know. So thank right. you. Thank, Thanks. Thank you, Des. Thank you, Desiree. Uh, Tonto. Tonto, Tonto, you need to... Tonto, you need to unmute yourself. That was your camera, Tonto. There you go. Now just hit the microphone. If you're at a computer, Tonto, just hold your space star down. 
You're still muted, Tonto. Does that work? You just hold the space bar down? Oop. Okay. <laughs> well, not yeah, you got me now? <laughs> yes. yes. You got me now? Yes. Go ahead, Tonto. A okay, uh, couple of things. Um, disabilities at the path by the housing street. If you want to take a walk down there, you could bring a wheelchair person and, and a walker over there and, and a stroller and see if anything uh, uh, could be helped with the wheelchairs, disabilities and everything like that. And the path with the cars, they says, uh, we don't have the keys to go to the locks to go home for the workers' cars because they close the gates when they go home. And that's why they use the path on, by the water. That's one thing. And uh, the other thing is, uh, there's too many puddles in the neighborhood uh, all around the uh, construction sites. I'm worried about flies, mosquitoes, and you know, it might be the, the bugs in around the neighborhoods. And there's a lot of puddles in the new, pa uh, new passive screens. And then now the passage going to the ferry now is damaged because they're doing construction over there now. So the patch is now damaged for walking and everything that. That's the only thing I'm talking about. Okay, and the lights. All right, thank you, Tonto. That's all right. Yeah, thanks, Tonto. We, the lights down by the ferry and by Houston Street, we are um, coordinating on, because uh, again, we do walk the site and we have received inquiries um, about that. So we're looking into that. Um, I walked the site this morning and I did walk the Corlears Hook path, but I didn't walk all the way down to the ferry. So I will um, take a look at that where the where you said that there was damage. Um, I know they did have to do some, um, Con Ed was doing some test pits over the um, weekend. So perhaps it was a result of that, but um, myself or one of our CCLs will take a look at that. Um, I think they'll be on site tomorrow. So we'll take a look at that tomorrow to see um, how that is. Um, and the, the little asphalt ramps that they have um, by the Houston Street and by uh, kind of the south end of Ballfield 3, there is a drain there um, that was creating a large puddle. We are aware of that and we are trying to work out these site conditions that are now um, popping up as a result of the, um, of the you know, construction work and detours that, that are being made. Um, again, the, with the passive lawn area, um, parks will take a look uh, at the drainage of the passive lawn area and other, some of the other fields. Um, once the weather gets warmer, apparently in the um, winter, it is kind of normal for the drainage to not be as well as when the, the weather warms up because the ground is frozen and not, you know, again, taking as much of the water. Um, but the team is aware of that and uh, we will be again looking into that. And uh, you, I just want to say Tonto, one thing. Real uh, quick. Okay, I just want to say one thing. It's, uh, I, I walk there every single day, so I'm just uh, for the squirrels. And I've been going to these meetings before Sandy when it was the Blue Way project too. So I'm a long time um, uh, you know, going to these meetings, that's all. All right, thank, thank you, Tonto. Tonto. <laughs> Wendy, and keep in mind, we have a second part of this. So Wendy, if you could wrap this up really quickly. Sure, I want to follow up on what Tonto and Desiree were just saying. You know, those trees that are still standing around that passive yard, there's about 33 mature trees, are soaking up that water and helping that passive yard lawn be less wet. So I really want to say, please do not cut those trees, especially for a temporary bridge. That would really be terribly sad and I have seen it maybe you saw it too Desiree if you walk down you see people for whom those trees are a sign of hope that someday the park will be back they're really important look the other way it's completely devastated so please leave those 33 or 35 trees as many as possible their habitat their admissions reduction, and they're soaking up that water. That's really important. We have so few birds, and I don't know if you noticed when you were in the park, how loud the highway sounds now. The FDR is deafening. You can't hear birds anymore. And this is a huge loss to the psyche and the well-being of people in this community. So I wanna say, please do not cut those 33 trees. They're marked to be destroyed. and we have had so much pain and destruction already. Please come up to the, the Houston Street end and walk that path that Tonto was just talking about. It's 
full of dog poop because people won't bring their dogs all the way in and there's no Wendy, dog do you have runs. a question here? Yes, my question is, Desiree, down at the Montgomery Gate, can we have an air monitor there, please? There is one at PA2's gate. Can we have one at PA1's gate, please? And can it... Thank you, Wendy. Desiree, if you want to answer that question and re remark on her comments. Yes, sure. So the air quality monitoring uh, location down at Montgomery, I can bring that back to the team, um, certainly. Uh, the passive lawn trees, I can also comment on um, the, as we are all aware, um, unfortunately, all of the trees are going to have to come down at some point in time. I understand that this is, you know, really difficult. I also love, you know, nature and trees and have places that I've gone to and it is, a, you know, very unfortunate. Um, however, the project is building flood protection for the community. And we really need to remember that as, as this project is happening, um, it will be replanted. It will be replanted with more resilient trees, greater tree diversity um, than, than only the London plane trees that are there right now. They are beautiful and they are wonderful trees, but they are not as flood, you know, they're not flood resilient. Um, so, that is, those are that not is, London planes. Those uh, are muted uh, uh, trees. Those are native. Wendy let, her, Wendy, let her finish. We've been doing pretty good. So just let her finish. And we still have Val and we need to talk about the amphitheater. So just let her finish, please. So, the, so I will say that um, when the temporary bridge is constructed, there will need to be, um, and when that work in that area for Corlears Bridge happens, um, there will need to be additional tree removals in or around the temporary lawn area. So that will be um, that project area. Again, we'll come up, we'll have a map for it. We'll show you where um, the work will be happening, but it should be expected that there will be tree removals in that location. Um, and then again, as we move north on the shared use path, it should be expected that trees will be removed as we move north. Um, that is, again, a result of the construction that needs to happen for the flood protection. Uh, we are working to keep as many trees as we can up. That is in a safe manner for the community. However, when they need to come down, they will need to come down. Um, and we are getting parks permits for all of the tree removals. Um, parks is on the call. We work very closely with parks for all stages. We cannot take down trees without a parks permit. Um, they, again, are not posted on site. Parks Department as a whole, on any Parks Department site, you will not see a tree removals permit posted um, on site, like the Department of Building requires folks to do that. So um, there's also been a lot about that, and I meant to say it earlier, but um, there will not be um, permits you know, posted on site also. We're going to do this. It's eight fourteen, and we still haven't finished part two of this. Val, did you have something about this this uh, presentation? Because we need to talk about the amphitheater, which is coming right up. Yeah, right this there. yeah this presentation. But two quick questions: uh, the Lower East Side Power Partnership sent a letter stating that we would like um, like a one page uh, summary of really kind of like these questions that people are asking, the air monitoring, all of that. And we have not gotten a response. And I think that that's really important, especially because people are talking about all, I think it's important. And the other thing was we also sent a letter about uh, somebody who came to our meeting and was concerned about the report and the, the, the one uptown and the fact that there were Anyway, when I reviewed it, I realized from looking at the federal EPA thing that this was a 24 hour number and this was a 15 minute monitoring. And we asked, the Lower East Side Power Partnership asked that the, the charts be labeled because the charts up there were not labeled. It was just that I looked it up is how I knew that, no, this isn't the pro this isn't 15 minutes. So. 
uh, that's my two questions. What, you know, what happened to some kind of uh, summary report that Power Partnership can review? We have various nurses and teachers involved, which are very good at how you explain things to patients and students. And the other question is, uh, what about labeling uh, whatever so that you don't have people very fearful and not understanding that your, your chart is using a 24 hour number for 15 minutes. So that's my two questions. Right. Thank you, go ahead this way. Yep, so um, some of the, gra the graphics that we're using in the report today, like the ones on this page are from that two pager summary that we have been working on. Um, we are that close to issuing it that I was able to use graphics from that. So um, this month, at some time this month, that uh, two pager error quality monitoring um, should be uh, released. Um, and then uh, the quality report, uh, we did revamp the um, quarterly report based on the comments that we received from the community, putting an executive summary in the front of the report. Um, we revised that uh, first report and then we'll have, we'll be issuing a report for the second half of the year. And then this year, they'll be happening on a quarterly basis as um, committed. So those, look out for those soon also. What, what about the labeling? Yes, I believe that has been incorporated as well. Okay, because the, the, you, you okay. had 15 minute things and then it was, it was okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Desiree. Hey, Josie, I just see your hand now. We have, is there a yeah, question about a, this? Yeah, just a quick question. Um, I would like to know, would it have been possible to save the trees by digging them up and because they're dormant, it's winter, and just, you know, having them planted somewhere so that they can be saved? They, they yeah. chop them all down. So the Parks Department underwent a significant kind of review of the construction of the park as part of the design phase and identified um, which project, which, you know, if any trees could be salvaged, transplanted, et cetera. Um, you know, it's, it's very difficult to transplant large um, trees and the conditions are different. You know, there's lots of different things that are considered with, with tree transplanting. Um, the Parks Department can probably speak to you um, a little bit better about that. Um, but the tree removals as, you know, depicted are what, you know, was, was the outcome of those decisions. So um, that is, you know, where, and, where we and are. And to add to that, Desiree, um, hi, Ophelia Rivas, DDC IGA. Um, we definitely understand and hear everyone in the community in terms of the trees, um, which is why, you know, DDC work closely with parks to identify any trees. Unfortunately, um, during the transplant, parks noticed that the trees wouldn't, they wouldn't um, survive. So even if we try to salvage them and plant them somewhere else or parks per se to do it, um, they wouldn't survive the transplant. So because a lot of them are older and as Desiree said before, a lot of them aren't, um, you know, they're not resistant to salt water or, you know, when our last couple of the hurricanes that hit that kind of impacted the, the surrounding trees as well. So because of all the weathering, their age, um, the, you know, the arborists who will work with parks and stuff, they go out there, they look at the trees to see if they can actually be transplanted safely and what makes sense. And so a lot of them couldn't. So that's why, you know, they had to be cut. But even though, you know, we are cutting down the trees, we are trying to work with like, you know, organizations like we did in Project Area 2, where we try to give the trees um, some a, a second life, whether it be like with wood chips um, or they take, uh, there was a group that took the pieces of wood. They actually went out there with Solar One to see what size they wanted the wood so they can, you know, reuse it for planting, if I'm not mistaken, Desiree. Thank you, Ophelia. We're going to move on because we still have, we're about 20 minutes over where I wanted to because I know we need to talk about the amphitheater cover. Michael, I don't know, or Desiree, who's uh, going to, do you know who's going to present Q, for that? Q, Q is Q. here. He's all set up. Okay. So if you want to start that presentation. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone. All right. Thank you, Desiree. All right. Hi, everyone. Happy to be back at CB3 and see how things are moving along as usual. Um, late nights, 
things don't change around, I guess, with our project. Let me Jill, share my screen. Can you introduce yourself? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm just trying to share my screen. Uh, Mike, can you let me give me access to that, please? Oh, okay. um, hi, everyone. Um, Q you and Miri. Uh, with the second one, please. Yeah. I can rename it if that's easier. Oh, it's fine. Gotcha. Uh, while we do that, um, perfect. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Q Amiri with DDC Coastal Resiliency Design Unit. Um, here to give everybody some good news on the amphitheater canopy. Uh, and I'll follow that up um, later in the agenda with a quick update on the BMCR project as well. So, uh, as many of you might know, and were involved in um, 2019 with our amphitheater uh, design, the actual amphitheater was designed and finalized during the larger Esker Eastside project um, in late 2019. And that included the uh, landscape, the site, the seating, accessibility, the stage, um, a lot of those components got finalized. Uh, many folks were involved and we got feedback and, and input from community members and, and the community here and uh, full committee board as well. But the canopy uh, was a request that came along um, during that process. And uh, we initiated that uh, sort of initial design and, and a feasibility level design uh, assessment back then in, in 2019. And um, we went on a short, semi-short maybe, or, or long pause, however we look at it. Uh, a pause to um, be able to get approval and secure some funding for it. And unfortunately we ran into the pandemic, which uh, further delayed the process, but we're back here now and have some good news that we secured the funding, we got our approval and we're ready to pick up where we left off with that design and resume uh, the canopy design. Uh, so tonight I just wanna give a really quick refresher recap of where we left off and what our next steps are with, with the schedule. And we'll be back with um, design presentation and, and more engagement we have down the road with the community. And I'll show that um, on the screen shortly. So just a quick recap, in 2019, we had convened at the request of the community uh, amphitheater working group um, that consisted of some community members uh, that volunteered to be part of the group. We had two sessions with the group at that time, uh, very productive, got really good feedback on not just the canopy, but also the amphitheater itself which further uh, informed the uh, amphitheater design on many components of that. Um, but the canopy got sort of pulled out on its own separate design track from there and um, led us to where we are right now. Uh, and we also had a community board presentation to the committee here, Parks Committee, late 2019 in October of that year. Um, and as we were moving forward for the next steps, we needed, like I said, approval for funding and pandemic again. And um, here we are with the next steps. Um, this is our schedule slide. Everything on the left side uh, that you see in gray is what I just mentioned um, up to this point. And here we are today in February of 2022, picking up with our design team. The team is really excited to uh, move forward with this and resume. Uh, they uh, back then had already developed some conceptual ideas uh, that was uh, shown to the community. And I have some of those slides to refresh everybody's memory, but we're building on what we, the work that we did back then and the feedback that we received um, on, and in addition to the direction that we need to follow from parks uh, maintenance and operations uh, team. So uh, <clears throat> we're working on that right now and we're targeting uh, April, um, sort of springtime April uh, engagement session again uh, with the amphitheater working group to sort of sit down, review the design um, up to that point get some um, uh, feedback again and uh, make sure that the input that folks have provided uh, back two years ago uh, is still um, relevant. Uh, a lot of you folks use this uh, amphitheater or as audience or probably performers far more than we do. So it's important for us to understand the day-to-day -day use and, and the um, needs and expectations of, of this space. And uh, apologies, I, I uh, forgot to mention this is part of the larger Eastside Coastal Project, which, um, which is why I'm piggybacking on Desiree's presentation. Uh, the goal is to design this canopy over the already designed um, amphitheater, which is being incorporated into the larger um, East River Park uh, uh, reconstruction. 
And our, our goal here with this canopy is to wrap up this design um, sort of halfway by mid um, uh, this year, mid 2022, um, targeting July, August timeframe so we can meet the uh, next milestones and tie it into the construction of the East River Park for Project Area 1. So like I said, um, stay tuned. We'll have more details on the April engagement session with the amphitheater working group. Um, don't, not sure exactly uh, which week or which dates we're working on that. We'll come back and make those announcements and that will be followed by a presentation to the committee here to get more input and feedback. And that would um, almost pretty much wrap up our sort of public period of the preliminary design. And, and we'll prepare all of that to uh, submit to the public design commission um, towards the end of probably May going into June. Um, and the next submission after that to the public design committee would uh, commission would be uh, for their for the final design uh, once we are able to uh, get feedback and input from the community, the community board here and the PDC uh, commissioners themselves. And once we go into final design phase, one round of submission again to the PDC, uh, wrap it up in um, sometime around August, hopefully, so we can move quickly through our procurement phase uh, and secure and um, register the construction funds and move into construction to hand it off to the team uh, for construction at that point. A um, Couple more slides here. This is our standard, what we've heard slide. I'm sure you've seen this um, many times before. Uh, these slides moving forward are all new. Uh, I'm sorry, they're not new materials. They're existing materials from last uh, last time in 2019. So I just uh, handpicked a handful of them with the team to give a refresher to everybody. The items grayed out on the screen, um, hard to read, um, but intentionally, those are the items that were uh, discussed and addressed and incorporated into the larger amphitheater design itself. Um, those are all finalized. We discussed it and, and uh, move forward with that. The items in, in white are what we're gonna focus on moving forward in the next several months. Uh, acoustics was a big uh, concern for folks uh, in the community. And um, one of the goals is to make sure the canopy itself is situated and designed in a way that minimizes the um, sound projections across the park into the res residential area as much as we can do that. <clears throat> of course, this is open air amphitheater, so it would be difficult to uh, take that down to zero clearly, but uh, the goal again, we have acoustic uh, consultants on board that they're helping us um, to trying to figure out how, how we can do that without compromising the actual um, goal and the design of the uh, canopy itself. Uh, stakeholder coordination, that's of course standard process uh, for all of our projects um, and we'll continue with those efforts and the structure. Again, um, this was one of the uh, committee uh, community uh, requests during the 2019 final design period of, of the ESCO project, along with many other requests that came, came along from, from you folks. So um, this is a summary of, of that. And of course, setting the stage for the rest of this phase for our um, structure design. Again, the rest of these slides are existing. They're all up on the website. This particular PowerPoint, I'll uh, work with Desiree and team to get it up on the website for your reference. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly go through, these are just reference photos, um, reiterating the priorities and the goals of this design. And um, the design considerations, uh, how it ties into the, to the design of the, of the new amphitheater, um, sort of a little lighting. Uh, assessments at a very high level diagram there. And a really quick uh, conceptual idea of, of the canopy itself. Uh, this is where we left off again in 2019. Um, we haven't really developed any details since then. We just kick started our uh, internal coordination meetings with our parks colleagues and our um, consultant team uh, to pick up and make sure that we have all the right uh, criteria that we need from, from the parks department and um, our consultants have everything they need to um, get down to the, the more the details of, of the next phase of this design. So bear with us, um, we'll come back again in a few months time or a couple months time, I guess, um, to uh, engage everybody and provide a more in-depth presentation. There will be more details on the design and um, we'll move on from there. So 
happy to take a couple of questions. Uh, and Trevor, I'll defer to you moving forward. Well, thank you, Q. And I'm going to remind everyone, this was just a quick presentation of something uh, where we left off. There will be more engagement meetings. Um, so if you have any limited questions, we'll take it. But we do have uh, uh, two other things on the agenda we need to take care of. Uh, but this is just to update everyone. There's been some questions about the, the amphitheater cover and the amphitheater in general. So we wanted to make sure that uh, this is the engagement process will restart. Um, I see one hand, we'll go to that hand and then Q, you can go on to BBE after this question. Uh, Ryan, Great. or David too, sorry. Thank you. Um, I'm excited right. to see this um, move forward and, um, and looking forward to um, being part of that, that process. And I just wanted to say that, you know, um, the only thing that, I'm hoping that I'll find out as you move forward is, you know, there's a kind of beautiful swoop to the design, but just thinking about functionality, just thinking not only the acoustics, but just how does it function for artists on the ground? Um, my concern being, I've seen a lot of outdoor design spaces, which are nice to look at, but they don't really work for, you know, community um, presentations and artists. So it's trying to hold that as we move forward. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, if you want to I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's not much of a response there other than to say that's Ryan, thank you for our highlighting that. That is definitely one of the um, criteria uh, for the consultant team to make sure, um, and, and we'll, we'll do some outreach on this too during the uh, last uh, amphitheater working group session uh, to better understand the loading, unloading, the access, the uh, power needs, all these were really discussed with regards to the stage back then in 2019, but a lot of it is also connected to the canopy itself of, um, like you said, openings or functionality of, of for the performers themselves. So, um, and I also wanted to mention that uh, if you are not part of the amphitheater working group, we have a contact list on our site that I sent an email out a couple of weeks ago and made this announcement to folks. But um, if you haven't received that and you would like to be part of the next amphitheater working group session, feel free to reach out to us. Um, if you do reach out to Desiree or the construction team, they'll definitely connect, connect you to us. We'll, we'll hear about it. Um, and I think you might have um, contacts information from me or Faye or Ophelia, any one of us. Um, we all talk to each other on a weekly basis. So uh, we'll be sure to follow up with you. And this is the um, website information. Um, and as a reminder, uh, we had planned for three amphitheater working group sessions, the third one is is the one upcoming in, in April. And if you don't join that by any chance, if you miss it, um, we'll come back to the community board pres uh, to present too as well. So there'll be multiple opportunities moving forward. Thank you, Q. Uh, David. Yeah, I, um, I would just, uh, this is going to be, I think, a very quick program to get the amphitheater done up because two months for a project like this or three months is usually usually is, is uh, more serious time. But the idea is, uh, first of all, if you can have the contact information on the community board website, is that possible? As well, uh, sure, Trevor, I will work with you, or maybe yeah, we can put yeah, a link just, to our. Yeah, send the email to the office and just CC me. But we'll, we'll yeah, and also, uh, I I hope you have all the. Right now, we're still talking design, but I hope all the design features will be on uh, and those contacts be able to be seen. So even people who don't attend the meetings get give input. Yeah, absolutely. Again, uh, these are what well, we update, every, up, upload everything to our website, to our project website, where circulate to the community board and anybody individually who reaches out to us, happy to share all the materials and to get everybody up to speed in case anybody misses those um, meetings. So absolutely, we're, we're available for all that. When do you expect the first designs to be on the, to be updated up, uh, we're targeting right now April, some, uh, sometime in April. I know that's not very specific, but um, we'll get back to everybody in the next month or so uh, to nail down that exact time frame. But April okay. is, is our target timeline right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank sure. you. Uh, Robin? Um, hi, Keith, thanks for that. Nice to see you. I just wanted to um, emphasize and support again what Ryan said about functionality and, and uh, power. It's just, again, I'm gonna mention power. I've been doing a lot of outdoor programming in all five boroughs. There's never any power. So I know that sometimes the first thing that gets cut, 
um, in, in, in parks. So I, I'm just gonna, that's one, that's I think a really, a really key here for, to help out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, so one of the key goals with, with for the uh, design team is flexibility to make sure this canopy, first of all, it integrates well with the stage and the amphitheater and the rest of the design of the uh, East, uh, East River Park but also flexibility for the performers. And um, during the uh, amphitheater working group sessions or any other, however, whatever vehicle feedback we receive, um, we wanna make sure that we better understand the programming and the day-to-day -day use or the weekend um, events of, of this stage so we can um, design around that and, and um, accommodate that as much as possible. Thank you. Kia, I'm just gonna piggyback off of that. And I had mentioned this I think it's we're going on three years ago, and maybe things have changed in our in our sort of way we think about things. Is uh, is to maybe take advantage of that structure for solar uh, that would take it off the grid and be readily available. I think there are opportunities to make it look nice, not just like some huge bank of solar uh, things. But when you're putting up a roof, there's always an opportunity, considering the sun exposure, to take advantage of uh, uh, what would be an unlimited source. But just to keep that in mind. Um, we're going to end this Great with Tante. Tante, we're going to end this with you. Keep in mind that we will have a series of meetings, but we'll end, uh, I'll take your last question, Tante. Tante? Space bar for unmute, I think. I didn't know that, actually. I think you pressed the leave button. Tante, you need to unmute yourself again. I lowered his hand, but he's still there. Tonto, if you want to place your comment or question in the chat, if you're not able to mute yourself, um, it's 8.37 and I really want to keep this moving as quickly as possible. Okay, now is it. Uh, the length and the, the width and the height of the amphitheater. Everybody's been asking me about it. How big it's going to be? Width and the height. Well, the, it's going to be wide enough and high enough to accommodate the stage that was designed. But that was yeah. actual um, heights and details. We don't. I don't have that right now. So we'll talk uh, about that you, in April. Do you have this? The, the you know the, the path. You know where it's going to sit. How wide it is. How long it is. The, you know the amphitheater is going to be. Right. It's, it's so I, again, I don't have that. Two feet, I don't. I, feet. I don't have the stage measurements right now with me. But this canopy, like he's like, for example, this picture, whatever the design is, it has to integrate well into the surrounding landscape. So it's not necessarily going to be the exact width of the stage. It could be larger. Or it could be sort of, sort of spilling out in some directions. So those are the details that we'll, we're hoping to show um, in, in our next presentations. Okay. If, if, if there are. If, if you have... Let me follow up on this. Just, to, at, at, I believe in April or May, you'll probably have more detailed uh, design. And obviously before PDC or Public Design Commission, you'll have those particular numbers. These are more or less Absolutely. draft. Uh, so it's kind of hard to talk about exact heights and exact widths at this point. Right. Okay. Val? Now, just quickly, you'll have about the, one of the big issues was all the people like chairs with backs on them. So you'll have that at a later point. Val, hi Val, how are you? Those were already discussed and finalized with the actual amphitheater design. So every input oh, okay. and feedback that we got, yeah, the, all, all of those were uh, made its way into the actual design of the this sort of green landscape with the sort of um, Oh, okay. So the things that spaces. went to that design meeting. Okay. Yeah, yeah that I all went into that. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. thank you. Just for clarification, this is about the uh, amphitheater uh, uh, cover or the structure that will cover the amphitheater area. All right, thank you. If you want to move on to our next topic, uh, Q. Sure, uh, happy to. All right, again, hi everyone. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so our next next quick update is on the Brooklyn Bridge Montgomery Coastal Resiliency Project (BMCR). Um, as many of you might know, we're currently in the procurement phase, but I just wanted to give a really quick overview. Um, some folks might be new to this, don't have the background. Um, this is probably repetitive for a lot of you, but the BMCR project um, is one part of the larger LMCR, Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency Plan, 
um, that sort of wraps around the lower Manhattan um, area. Um, BMCR followed by the financial district seaports. We just saw a master plan come out by our colleagues at EDC and mayor's office. And that, that's followed by the battery and the battery park city projects that they're doing. So this is specifically about the BMCR project that the project boundaries sort of starts from the tail end of the east side project that we were just talking about earlier at Montgomery Street, all the way down to the Robert Wagner, Robert Wagner Place um, point um, along the waterfront on the east side of South Street. You can see uh, this sort of uh, very thin, faint orange line on the screen. And it's it includes uh, a range of different gates uh, and um, fixed structures. And this was exhaustively uh, presented during the design phase uh, to the community, but we're happy to uh, get anybody up to speed that, that was not part of that. Um, again, for those who were part of that, that period, the planning and design phase of this project was managed by our sister agency, EDC, uh, Economic Development Corporation, um, with Mayor's Office of Re uh, Coastal Res Climate Resiliency, and of course, our agency, DDC, and many other city agencies as usual, since we all traveled in the pack, um, everybody was involved in that, in that uh, design and planning phase. And um, the design was finalized, transferred over to our agency at DDC for uh, construction. We're currently in the procurement phase, uh, which is why we really don't have much details to share just yet. Um, but I put this overview sort of slide together again to get folks, uh, give folks a refresher um, you can see on the first line, the amount of funding that we received for this project, a uh, total of five, $522 million, uh, a mix of federal funds and city funds. And the procurement status right now, um, we're preparing uh, with our legal teams and um, uh, specs and contract teams and everybody else uh, to get uh, ready for bid advertisement. And that's, that package is still being worked on right now as we speak. Uh, the next steps on the screen, like you see, is all in gray, uh, which we haven't reached yet. But once we got bids, I'm sure many of you are probably uh, familiar with our procurement process at this point, if not experts, based on the Esker project that we've had, the three packages so far. Um, after we uh, release the bid package uh, for, for public, for bidding, uh, advertisements, uh, we uh, move into uh, opening the bids uh, from contractors and it gets evaluated. And um, we have some steps in between with uh, bid, bid uh, review and, and meetings and kickoffs and stuff. And um, after that, once the lowest bidder is selected uh, and awarded, it moves on to this bottom line as a very high level um, step-by-step -step process. That takes a, a quite a while, probably another few months or so to go through these approval steps here down below um, until we reach a notice to proceed and um, have an actual groundbreaking date. So I'm saying all this just to make the point that it's way too early without having a contractor on board, without really knowing what their plans are, what their crew sizes, all those details, we're not gonna be able to answer any construction related questions at this point, um, but very likely uh, a lot of the standard operations and the step-by-step -step processes of the, of the construction phase would be very similar to what we all recently just went through with the Eastside project. Um, so I'm sure you, you'll all familiar with that and have some background there and uh, you'll, you'll hear us, hear us uh, in the future repeating a lot of that, um, uh, those terminologies and that processes. Uh, so that's what I have right now. That's, uh, I know it's kind of vague, high level, but unfortunately um, we'll have to come back again in a few months time with more details once, once we have that. Happy right. to take Thank questions. you, Q. I, I'm going to ask a few questions. I, I'm hoping that EDC is still on the line uh, for this call because there are some questions about this project. Number one, if you go back to that slide, uh, I, the previous slide. Uh, I'm sorry, one more. Okay, I'm this gonna, one? I don't remember where, where it was, but I know somewhere it said this is a four year project or you anticipate oh, four years. Um, yeah, yes, four year construction. Oh, right, yeah. So, yeah. what would help is if you go to the next slide, the, the one that showed the if we knew where, it, like, if it's going to take four years, we understand that that's procurement and construction, just some ETA on the grayed out boxes so we have some idea of when this is going to start. 
We do have experience with ESCR, but we can't, I can't look at this and say, okay, is this going to happen in this process right. this year, next year? So that would be helpful. I don't want to do it at 8.45 tonight, but just uh, for reference, it makes it easier for us to understand the path of this project, considering that there's a lot going on with ESCR and that traffic, uh, projected buildings, Pier 42, all happening at the same time. Um, right. Uh, I, I, Trevor, to that point, just to answer that, um, we are, I will say we are targeting summer construction groundbreaking, but I didn't want to memorialize that here in the slide because again, this, as you can see, this one, the first step that we're in right now, it's a moving target and we really need to make sure our legal team and contract team, everybody finalizes the package. Once we go out to bid, then it's really easier, a lot easier for us to predict um, the next steps and the target dates coming after that. So just, okay. just bear with us for a little bit and I'll definitely get you those dates uh, moving forward. Okay, thank you. And um, I don't, if EDC can answer these two questions or if they're on the line, and it was more of a, uh, a question about existing conditions and what will happen to what is now being called SPCR, which is a new acronym for Coastal Resiliency that will either tie in or somewhat replace the BBE project. Uh, so I don't know if EDC wants to speak to that because we did want to update on the Brooklyn Bridge Esplanade project. Hey Trevor, we have, an, we have a deck for you for BBE that includes the, the overlap with Seaport Coastal Resilience, which I think is what you're asking about. I'm happy to yeah. jump into that now or wait a minute. No, I didn't realize because we got, I didn't realize that was part of this project. I mean, part of this, the well, deck, uh, we, it's, it's not part of the MCR, it, as you, you know. No, 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 I didn't know you were going to present that deck. Yeah, just that that's helpful because we only got the deck for the, the, this, the BB, unless I missed it. I only got the deck gotcha. for BMCR. Um, but are, uh, before gotcha. uh, we go into that, are there any questions about BMCR from anyone? Okay, Catherine, it's all you. It's all you. Wow. All right. I'm, I'm hopping off. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you. And we'll come back in a couple months. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think I can share my screen. So just give me a second um, here to make sure I'm sharing appropriately. Um, I'll make it full screen. You're all set. Uh, Gigi, I don't know if, great. Gigi, I don't know if you want to um, do a quick intro. Or if you're, uh, if you, I'm not sure if you've been to CB3 yet since you've joined EDC. Mm -hmm. so. Hi everyone, um, good evening. I, I know many of you. Um, officially, I am here today in the new capacity as the vice president uh, in the government and community relations team at EDC. Um, I do cover Lower Manhattan, but I um, do not exclusively work on Lower Manhattan. I also have Queens, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Um, so. Uh, day to day, um, feel free to email me on anything related to EDC. Um, I am still in the process of filling Will Fisher's position, um, who many of you know. And so um, when that happens, um, uh, he or she will be uh, your direct contact. But for now, um, you're stuck with me. Thank you, Gigi. So I'll jump in. So Trevor, um, the first thing that what you mentioned is Seaport Coastal Resilient. Resiliency. So the mayor announced funding um, last fall for, for this investment. Um, it'll protect the area from regular tidal flooding from sea level rise. The, 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 the ge geography of this area is roughly from Fulton Street um, up to the Brooklyn Bridge um, to the tie-in um, of BMCR. Um, uh, that's, that is the specific overlap of BBE, which I'm showing mousing over here. Uh, BBE, sorry, being Brooklyn Bridge Esplanade for folks um, in the room that are not familiar with that project. Um, um, uh, so as part of the Brooklyn Bridge Esplanade project, um, we identified a bunch of, of amenities and, and, and things and we designed a, a project that we were, we were pleased with. Um, but uh, due to the, the future project, um, it, it, it did not make sense to build out Brooklyn Bridge Esplanade as originally designed. Um, and so uh, we are building out a portion of BBE, um, which I'll show on the a next subsequent slide. Um, uh, but the, the future project, the Seaport Coastal Resiliency Project, which is what it is termed right now, 
will both absorb the, the input from folks during the Brooklyn Bridgesplanade engagement, but also do its own round of, of updated engagement with the community to, to make sure that current needs are met. Um, again, that project will be a, um, uh, a sea level rise protection project uh, from roughly Fulton Street up to the Brooklyn Bridge, um, and then uh, will include amenities layered on top of that. What that, what that specifically means um, roughly would be an elevation of the bulkhead, elevation of the esplanade um, for sea level rise. But again, it has not yet been designed and the timing of that project um, is yet to be determined. Um, uh, you can see on this slide, we anticipate this summer procuring a design team um, for that work. Um, but for Brooklyn Bridge Esplanade, this project here, um, so again, we are coordinating essentially kind of reducing scope um, of BBE in relation to Seaport Coastal Resiliency. Um, the, the bulkhead um, is, we're repairing, rebuilding and repairing the bulkhead essentially north of the get down, which is um, under, the get down will be directly underneath the Brooklyn Bridge to the sandy area that's there. Um, um, and so that is that bulkhead work is in design. But right now, the construction fencing and the folks you see out there doing work, they're installing new curb and the bike lane and a, a, a segment of Esplanade of elevated of elevate, elevated bike lane um, from uh, from our project end at Peck Slip um, up to Catherine Slip. Um, that work is ongoing. It's been ongoing since last fall. Um, we anticipate being done really in May um, of this year for the bike lane, and that also includes the lighting. So we have an electric, electrical contractor out there installing new conduit, new fixtures, um, um, and they'll be done in May, May, June. There's a little bit of supply chain issues with the lighting, but we do have some um, better dates um, on the new lights. Um, so we are, so that's the work that, is, that you see out there today. Um, again, it's the bike lane from Peck up to Catherine, um, and then the, the get down, um, which the rent is shown in the rendering here. The get down procurement um, will probably go out to bid um, in the next few weeks. Um, we are working on kind of finalized permitting um, uh, with SBS uh, for the get down. Um, so that should go out to bid and uh, hopefully start construction this summer. But I honestly would say it'll probably be late, late this summer, early fall to start the, the get down work. Um, um, and then the next slide kind of, again, this is the overall scope of of Brooklyn Bridge Esplanade, the yellow area here will, will not be built by the BBE project. Um, this included the kind of finishing of the plaza across from Peck. So I understand this is south of, of your district, but the, the overall project since it spans both. Um, so it included the, the, the plaza and planters, um, the exercise equipment and game painted game areas. This, this is kind of the biggest impact for a future um, uh, Esplanade raising or coastal resiliency um, sea level rise project. Um, the blue along all through here is work that we are doing right now and again will be done um, later this spring in May or June. It also includes lighting throughout the whole um, length of this space since that work is currently ongoing. This kind of line here um, is outlining where the BMCR project will start. So BBE was designed in concert with BMCR, so we weren't designing in the same space. Um, and so the BMCR project um, is in this gray hatched area, except for this, the blue here where we have the bike lane. Um, the get down is, is small in like its specific um, its specificness, <laughs> um, but it is a big part of the project. Um, and it was very important, um, as many folks know, um, to the local, to the community and to folks. So that get down is still included in the project and the future coastal resiliency project will treat it as an existing condition. So it will be kind of incorporated into the design um, for the future project as, as it can. And then I mentioned the bulkhead that we are doing. It was kind of a separate project that we um, took on from our waterfronts team in asset management at EDC. Um, so we'll be uh, re redesigning to rebuild the bulkhead for the full length up to Catherine Slip. Um, so yeah, that is that is it. I was trying to be be quick but clear. So please let me know um, if you have any questions. Well, thank you, Catherine. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. And this well, this is more of a issue. I don't know if you still bike the uh, the Esplanade portion, but the lights have been out uh, from at least 
pike uh, pike to pier 35 and they're out i so, can see it outside my so, those have been out for months and it's extremely dangerous so i don't, I don't know what's going on with that so they're i'm not so uh, the work that we're doing has not turned off any lights that were no that were not on before um so we like w the electrician's work has, has not removed any lighting and no. in, in any way out there there we have just as of the other day we did add some uh a uh some new light towers though for a couple of those spots that are very dark and they're a little darker but kind of because of our construction fence so there are new light towers out there as of just this week um uh, lighting up the bike lane um i I know that also this is again this is further south um the lights along the esplanade um uh, along sorry I'll, I'll point some of the lights along here have recently been um re lanterned essentially um so those are now on um um no no Kathy, i'm talking again, the, about the, the area yeah i'm talking about the area between pike and pier 35 and maybe a little further south the lights that that are on the bike lane they've been out for at least three four months they were intermittent intermittent at a certain point, but now they're completely out. And I know it's okay. a park. These aren't DOT, it's either EDC or park, but those are the lights I'm talking yep. about which are out. They're, they're parks. Um, so I will I will reach out to parks and I will go out there with our construction manager um, and parks just to see if there is something in the work that we're doing to install new lighting um, that has caused those lights to go out. But the, the lighting conditions we haven't changed any lighting conditions out there. And I don't know if it's again, a timer issue um, with parks. Cause I know that I, when I have been out there, the lights have been on at a time of day when it doesn't, it doesn't always make sense for the lights to be on, but I will follow yeah, up with. They're definitely with out at night. Yeah, and, I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Um, I see Daniel, any other committee members? Uh, Daniel, you Sorry, ask? go ahead. No, go ahead, Catherine, before Daniel. I. I'll let, I'll, I'll, I want to go out there again and just double check because there are some locations that never had lights and so it's always been no, a these bit are, dark. These are, these, are, um, these are right outside these are, my back door. Okay. Yeah, so. okay. Okay. Daniel? Thanks. I, um, I just wanted to, I keep hearing get down at the Brooklyn Bridge Beach as opposed to beach access. Does that oh, sir, mean sir. that it'll I, be fenced was, in when you get down there or that you're will have beach access. The design has always been that there will be a railing and a gate across the across the face of it. Um, it'll be a controlled access um, there. It will go down fully. It, you know, the bulkhead will be cut down to the level of the sand. Um, that has that design hasn't changed from what we presented. Oh man, yeah, like pre-COVID, you know, because we also had a pause in, in this in this project, a significant one. So um, I believe I will double check um but i believe our website has some of the previous presentations if not i will definitely um, share back with cb3 um or at least uh, update edc's website but but the get down does go goes down but then it does have a, a fence and a, a gate across um edc um another division within edc um and with parks um we will still wanted that access to be managed um and not not a not a fully open uh fully open to the water because it, it will have it will ha it will be it is underwater um, you know, a couple times a day, as you probably know. But it will be able to be opened at some points, at some time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And, and I don't know if Susan's online, but I'm uh, from CP3. And, uh, this, after hearing all this, I, I would really like to see some sort of uh, bigger scale uh, construction type of team because we're, we have all these projects merging at the same time being the summer and uh, and we need some coordination not and I understand it's not yeah. DC or it, it's just that with the two towers proposed Pier 42 which is coming up next BMCR, SPCR, BBE, it, all these projects well, and I, 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 I would <laughs> like to see some heavy, some larger coordination. Sure. I will say though the Seaport Coastal Resiliency Project, we will be issuing an RFP for a designer this summer. Mm -hmm. There will be design for the next two and a half years for that project. Um, so there so there's, will not away. be any construction. Yeah, that is that is definitely further out. For BBE, honestly, what we have always wanted to do is even with the pause in the pandemic and we have always wanted to get out of the way of BMCR um, and with the, what T was talking about. And, you know, we do coordinate with DDC. I still have weekly calls 
um, with that team. Um, you know, that the, the BBE, our work, we will be kind of rolling out of there in regards to the bike lane and the lighting work that we're doing now. Yes, the get down work will start, but that is really limited and we can we can we can coordinate that that we can coordinate that access and we can limit the the area that the contractor will be using for um, for that for that construction work. Um, but I, I hear you. I mean, and we do talk to DDC um, on a regular basis. Um, and we will we'll follow up in regards to the adjacent neighborhood construction and those impacts, um, looping right. in DOT, um, since you had the question about uh, truck routes earlier as well. Right. It's I think just, that makes sense. I just wanted that there, because of the, well, there are three towers proposed along South Street that are massive, and, and there, we, we have to get a dialogue between those that construction team and EDC, and, and it's going to be difficult to make that happen, but it's important. Any yeah, other questions? Trevor. Okay. Trevor, it's Q again from DDC. Just wanted to add to what Catherine was saying. Um, once again, once we have our exact construction dates, we'll mm -hmm. be sure. Obviously, EDC and, and us, we and all the other agencies will work together very closely. But as they're rolling out with BBE, we can talk to the contractor on our end and make sure there's no conflicting areas um, between the two agencies, and maybe they can start from one end and, and finish at the other. Th those conversations will start once the contractor comes on board. But then with the two towers, with the towers um, project, um, I'll take this back and make sure our construction team contacts those folks too to get a sense of their schedule and see um, how traffic and construction operations and all that um, could be managed so they don't collide all together in, in one time. That's it, I'm done, <laughs> sorry. Thank you, any other questions? Well, thank you. Catherine and the team from EDC, uh, congratulations, Gigi, on your new position. I'm sure we'll be using that email that's been posted regularly um, until we find another, well, we don't have another term we'll call Will. Um, but thank you for that presentation. We do have one more item um, of interest, and that is Pier 42. I hope uh, the new CCL didn't get scared about the length of this meeting because it's actually not too bad. Uh, but if uh, that person is ready to present. Yeah, thanks, Trevor. I'm still here. Rick? I'm, yeah, okay. yeah, I'm in for I the long time. So. Okay, okay, no worries. Thanks, Rick. If you want yeah, to you introduce bet. yourself, go ahead. Yeah, I'm Rick Fogarty. I'm the community liaison for the Pier 42 Upland Park project. Um, real quick, I wanted to say thank, thanks to Frank for um, uh, the, the kudos there. I appreciate it. Um, our project is made easier by the community. Um, thank you for getting information out when we uh, issue our releases. It really helps us that the community um, disseminates that information and gets it to, uh, to everybody in the residences. And um, we really appreciate that. So thank you, Frank, for saying that, but thank you for doing the, the legwork. So um, we have some big news that I just found out the other day. Um, the, the, uh, park, the park deck is um, has started construction. So we're uh, moving along with that um, after a series of setbacks on permits and things like that. But um, so we're excited. And as far as we know right now, the um, project date of summer 2022 is is still um, on target. Uh, and that's just for the deck. The uh, master plan is for 2023. And I don't have a specific date for that yet, but it is in 2023. So, um, so I'm happy to take any questions if there's any. Rick, I just want to uh, mention a few things uh, sure. that in terms of uh, notification, I, I know the closure of the FDR uh, was something that happened pretty quickly, but I imagine that DOT has to approve that. And it, it makes a difference a little further south because people are come using, as you know, South Street is, a main, is the entrance to, for the FDR uh, from this point, and it was closed with a detour. Um, if we could just get as much advanced notice on that as possible, um, I know there are a couple of food deliveries uh, that that use this route, and they got kind of got caught in that uh, 50 hour closure. And it was one of the few things that wasn't on the Google Maps, or at least that's what the drivers were telling me that it was closed. So if we can get that information out as soon as possible, um, the other issue or question and it was raised earlier and at a previous meeting was how are we going to access Pier 42 since we're targeting a summer opening from the south and I know there's a lot of construction going on and uh, closures and temporary bridges so if we could get an answer or if you know or get some information about that. Yeah, I can address both of those. Um, so first and foremost, the um, the closure on the FDR. I apologize. Um, that was actually issued. They made the decision the day before um, with um, 
one of the agencies that gave us the permit for that um, was literally the day before. So we didn't have much advance notice to get that out. Um, that's not the way that I would like to do that. I prefer to have a week's notice at least. Um, so everything is, is uh, on the up and up. But that, that was, um, I, I apologize again that that was such a rush, a rush job. So, um, but thank you for, uh, for compensating with that. And, and sorry about any inconveniences it caused. Um, the, um, I'm sorry, what was the second question? Access to- oh, access, uh, access, yeah. The, um, the access points, so we're still working on that. Um, there's still plans in place or plans being um, uh, discussed on, but there will be the Montgomery Street and there will be the corridor so entrances. Uh, we're, they're just working on the final designs on those, but they, it will be the south and north entrances, pretty much um, where the gate is right there at Montgomery Street right now. And then also where the uh, entrance at Quarters uh, Ferry Hook or Quarters Hook Ferry stop has been. Um, so there will be entrances on both ends. Okay, it's important, obviously, for this, obviously, the uh, the south entrance, which, because it hasn't been on any sure. map. So I think just make sure that we have the southern entrance. Uh, yeah, on it's still in design. yeah, it's still in okay. final design. Yep. But I'll, I'll get that um, updated on you when I hear something. Thank you. Okay. Questions from committee members? Wow. Any questions from anyone? Yes, I actually. I actually have one. I'm sorry, I can't find my um, hand right Go now. Go ahead, Wendy. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so you just said um, about opening up from the Corlear side, so from the ferry, so people can come through there. And, um, you know, there's still no signage. <laughs> I'm just laughing. That's because um, something I'd asked about before. But is there going to be any kind of uh, a restroom on the deck? the new Pier 42 deck or any kind of shade up there? Or is it just gonna be um, the play fields and a couple of benches? Sure, there will be comfort stations. Um, there is gonna at least one that I know of. I, I would assume there's gonna be more than one. Um, I can get information about that and uh, get that to Trevor uh, so you can get that. that uh, that'd too, be but, great. I'm, I'm yeah. also curious, I had asked about making the, the walkway continuous from Pier 42 to Pier 35, and it just would mean that the DOT lot, which is on public space, would have to get moved back about 10 or 15 feet to allow people to have a walkway all that way along the waterfront, which I think will be really welcomed when all of this work is underway for years around here. People are going to really need that walkway. And you know, can we, has there been any progress on that request? Wendy, I'm, I, I hear you and I agree with you, but I don't think, Rick is the CCL for the construction for Pier 42. Uh, and, and you just reminded me that we need to continue the advocacy for that opening point. We've taken a few tours of that area and you're right, it's about 10 feet of waterfront space that connects the entire waterfront that we could use. But let's save that for, uh, uh, for the parks team um, because Rick is really just here to answer CCL questions on, on 42, but I hear you and I agree with you. Uh, that brings me to another point, uh, Gigi, I don't know if you're still listening or someone from EDC, uh, someone did say uh, something about the Pier 36 gates. Uh, when the Van Gogh exhibition was there, they had the staff to open and close it at a regular time. Now it's just randomly open and closed and, and I don't know who's responsible. And I know this has been an issue, an ongoing issue of access there but it would really help if we could discuss, and I don't want to do it tonight, but if we can discuss a regular opening and closing for that gate, it just doesn't make any sense to have a, a point of, of, of a really nice walkway that, that, is, that doesn't have uh, regular access. And I, and I don't go there all the time, but uh, I, I know that that gate in the summertime is, there isn't a schedule for it. So if we could address that, uh, it'd be helpful. Yeah, I'm happy to follow up with that. All right, thanks. Trevor, one last thing. I put my information, uh, I can, uh, earlier I wasn't able to put it in for everyone to see, but my uh, contact information is in the chat. Um, sure. There's a website you can go to for the latest information on the project. Um, my project phone number is on there, so feel free to reach out to me that avenue, or um, my email is on there, and you can get hold of me that way if you need to. So uh, please feel free to reach out with me to me with any questions you guys may have. Right, and his position is for the Pier 42 uh, project as a CCO. Yes. Any questions? 
Motion to adjourn. No questions. Uh, well, I, I, Michael, is that the last item? I think we are done. I get to, that's pretty good. Um, thanks everyone for, for attending and for keeping this meeting as efficient as we possibly uh, could. It's appreciated. Um, if we can take attendance, Brian, that would yes. be helpful and we can end our meeting. Trevor Mullen. Yes, and I just realized there's something we're going to have to discuss at the the uh, the next the uh, task force meeting regarding the um, track houses. So I'm sorry, little Lar, but I will get to that at, on the next meeting. But yes, sorry, that was a long-winded yes. Kay Webster, yes. Ryan Gillum, yes. David Adams, a short-winded yes. <laughs> Neuron Altman. Yes. Carlin Chan. Yes. Valentina Jones. Yes. <laughs> Michael Marino. Yes, I loved it when she kept saying it. Get down. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Chattel. Uh Yes. You Daniel Tino. Yes. Josephine Velez. Get down. <laughs> Troy Velez. Yes. All right, get down, y'all. <laughs> yeah, get down on it. So if that's <laughs> if, if, can, if we can make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. I think we have down. one more thing to discuss, Fred. What is that? I thought you had one more thing to discuss. I oh, know for next time he said. Oh, for next I, time. Well, next time. have a so wonderful that's it. weekend. Yeah, I'm everyone sorry. have a good, wonderful weekend holiday if you can take Happy it. Happy Valentine's uh, appreciate Day. It. To all you Happy Valentine's Day. Bye, guys. Get down. Get down. Get down. <laughs>